Shabbat Shalom uh, Mishpacha and the awesome tribes of Israel. This is uh, Rabbi Salman al Tafel Cohen uh, speaking from the east. Hopefully you can hear me clearly. <coughs> As I might get noises behind me here and there, but I'll try to do the best I can to speak clearly for this uh, Shabbat. I uh, will start with our joke. There was a plane going down over the desert with only three parachutes on board. There were four people on board, the smartest man in the world, the best doctor in the world, an old priest and a young nerd. The doctor says, people need me for my medical skills. He grabs the first parachute pack and jumps. The smartest man in the world says, people need me for my intelligence, grabs the pack and jumps. The old priest says, I have lived a long and happy life. You take the last shoot. The nerd says, don't worry, there are enough shoes for the both of us. The smartest man in the world just grabbed my backpack. So this is it, you know, this is not, uh, I think this joke is, is parallel with our life and our structure. The reason why I say that is that uh, there are a lot of people who, who, you know, claim to be or either are smart in the world. But success in life does not come to you because you are the smartest person in the world or the best brains in the world. That's not necessarily so. And we got to understand that. So we have to also know that this week has been a, a week of festivals. We went through, as you know, the festival of Sukkot, Tabernacles. It is a great festival. I am pretty, pretty certain that all of you enjoyed yourselves during this uh, fall feast. And uh, we also had, uh, straight after the festival, we had an additional two days of Simcha Torah, where we had the Torah readings completed according to the uh, lunar Jewish calendar. And then we kind of move on to start the readings again from Genesis chapter 1, Bereshith. Now, I've had a very eventful week, been very busy uh, traveling up and down, and uh, really, I mean, not just traveling up and down, <laughs> but I, I've, been doing, I've been doing some good work over here with some people who were ill. I've been trying to support them, guide them, and even if I had some, some stuff on me, some uh, supplements or medication, I've been dis dishing those out to these people to help them. So, I, I think that uh, one thing that uh, I wanted to look at today is, of course, Bereshith is our first chapter in the Bible, but we are still kind of in the festival moment. I haven't finished, uh, you know, all the the frills and all the excitement around our festivals. But before I get into the Bereshit Genesis, where God has made the creation, Bereshit Barahim Alif Tav Hashamayim Va Et Haeretz. In the beginning, Elohim created the Shamayim and the land. Now, before we, you know, get into this, I think it will be uh, it will be good for me to touch base on our lives personally because you know we can uh, go through life and we can be like either unconscious, we can go through life unconsciously and creating situations, relationships, events unconsciously or we can create them consciously. I think this is very important. In the narrative of Genesis where God has created the heavens and the earth, what is very important is that creation technically, I mean to most people, that was the end of creation but not really because that wasn't the end of creation, because now God is manifested on this earth within us. So we are now the manifestation of God on earth. Through us now, 
through us, the children of Israel, and anybody else that becomes part of Israel, God was going to co-create through us, and we became the representatives of God. Now to many people, this might be confusion, uh, because what religions have done world over, this is the same both in the East and in the West, what religions have done is, as you know, if you come from a Christian background, they created denominations, and then they separated out, this is how we do our baptism, this is how we believe in Jesus of Nazareth, and this is what we do. If you come on the east side, the situation is no different, it's very similar. Denominations and the different set of belief systems in Jesus. You have Jehovah's Witnesses over here, you have Baptists here, you have Methodists here, you have Pentecostals, you have Presbyterians, all sorts. You also have an Islamic country over here and a, a very strong Islamic faith with you know, mosques, maybe 50,000 mosques. Uh, all over the place, blur, you know, blaring out their uh, daily prayers. And Islam, you know, has a, a few offshoots as well. Not as many as Christianity, but it does have a few offshoots, uh, such as the Shiites. Uh, they have the Qadianis, they have uh, who are called Ahmadis, and uh, and a few others. You know, not too many, but a few others. Now. The question is this, that Israel, or our forefathers to start with, our patriarchs, they were given a, a system to live their lives successfully. And then this was reiterated in the form of covenants to Israel uh, later in history, throughout Abraham, it's a history, and later it was iterated in covenants of Israel that the covenants were essentially the thing that tied our salvation, our rescue, our need of, of uh, assistance from God throughout our lives. Now, of course, the Bible has many terminologies, verses that are, are symbolic in nature and also have practicality, practical in nature. But unfortunately, religions, all religions, and especially I would say Christianity, has taken away those things and try to make them spiritual, like you know, airy fairy concepts. And those concepts are just not uh, entirely true. They cannot be just taken as airy fairy concepts. They are really things that you need to use to better your life. If you are not doing that, then you're just stuck in a religion. And a religion will give you of no benefit, have, have no benefit to you in the long term. Because if you are worried about your salvation, then don't be. Because the moment you enter a covenant of Israel, your salvation is secure. And, and that's it. The salvation is secure. There is nothing for, further to that. You don't have to do any particular thing after that to secure it, or you don't have to keep baptizing yourself, because as you know, baptisms really are ritual immersions. They are conducted at different times of the year for our people to do with festivals or Sabbaths. They are not right, uh, you know, they're not like a, a right on to salvation. There's no given baptism in the Torah that says, hey, you got to do this baptism to be saved. There is no such thing. So, there is, there is tradition and there is scripture. And this is very important that we get that. And the, the, the version of Jesus that I find in the public domain when I travel here or when I travel abroad is I find, or when I even live abroad, I find the two Jesuses, I call it the two Jesuses. The two Jesuses, there's a one Jesus that's practical, that's Torah based, that wants you to know how to live your lives and be abundant and successful. There's the other Jesus that's spiritual, that's out there, that's airy and fairy, and that you'll never find. Because he's a created form 
of a man who is created by the hierarchy, the, the system of man, that you can call it the ecclesiastical system of man. And henceforth, I mean, I would reject that form of Jesus, period. I would take the form of Jesus that you and me both know that Jesus was not a Christian. He did not identify himself as a, as a, a Baptist. He identified himself as of the clan of Judah, born of a Jewish mother, <laughs> as we know, and uh, belonged to a Jewish father. Okay, albeit father being that he was, you know, adopted in the sense that if you believe in the virgin birth, or whether you don't believe in it, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day that does not hold your salvation either. The belief in a virgin birth or not has no parity with your salvation. Remember what I told you earlier about your salvation. It's through the covenants of God that Israel is already redeemed. Israel doesn't have to be redeemed 33 times. It's already done once and that, that one time stands. Now the question regarding our lives is, like I said earlier, is are you now going to be creating consciously or unconsciously? And those of you that are creating unconsciously are going to be running into all sorts of problems in your life because you're going to be unconsciously creating relationships, problems, difficulties, um, financial issues, all sorts of things are going to happen because you're unconsciously doing it. You don't know that you're doing it. And I can guarantee you that 95% of the people in the world fit the unconscious model. They're unconsciously doing things and things are happening around them and they're like wondering, how is this coming about? But really, everything that is happening in your life is a result of creation by yourself, directly or indirectly, consciously or unconsciously. And it is very important that we understand that as we are at the beginning of the civil, civil new year, that we have two choices. We can create consciously and we can establish our life or we can create unconsciously and you know, run amok in our life and be all over the place. And I will prove it to you through scripture today that God has given you the power to create consciously. Now it is very important to again come back to the central point. Who do you listen to and who is your mentor? Because it is very important to have a mentor. If you don't have a mentor, you are not going to know where to start and you are not going to know where to finish. And if you search for uh, mentors on the internet, sure you can hear many, you know, many such individuals on the internet who may or may not fit your mental class, but there is a lot of disparate information out on the internet, some of it accurate, some of it faulty. Now, nothing happens in life and <laughs> nothing happens by chance. And I'm going to start giving you a little bit of testimony now. I went to my student's house in Lahore, a city where I was born, and I asked the question, you know, I asked the questions to the heavens. Was I manifested here? Because he asked me that question. He said, Rabbi, did I manifest you? And I said, more than likely, yes, you manifested me here. And you manifested my books. Because he said that years ago, about nine years ago, he said that I wanted to get your books, your Bible that you translated, the Abrahamic Faith Bible, and the Siddur, but I couldn't get hold of it. He said, I tried to get, get, reach some people over here in Pakistan, and they wouldn't respond to me, my phone calls, and I just, you know, put it behind the back burner that I wanted to get these books. And guess what? Those books arrived nine years later at his doorstep through postage, because I posted them nine years later. Now he said, he said, did I manifest these? And I said, yes, you manifested them, because when I asked the question in the heavens, the answer was yes, they were manifested. And yes, I was manifested in his home. But I said, the, the big question was, why did it take so long? Nine years. It shouldn't have taken so long. 
So I explained to him, the reason why it took nine years is because you did not have a, a proper method for manifesting. In other words, he was doing it unconsciously. I can guarantee you that this man was manifesting my books consciously, he would have had them in a lot less time, maybe less than six months, maybe even less than three months. He could have had those books, maybe I could have been at his house within that same year had he consciously been manifesting it. But he wasn't consciously doing it. He was unconsciously doing it. He had no support, no real mentor, nobody really to talk to. And so therefore, you know, this is how people are. You see, people do things in their life and it sometimes takes seven, eight, nine years to do something when it could have been, the same thing could have been done the same year, in a few months. This is why I said it's very important to have conscious manifestation, not unconscious manifestation. And I'll give you methods for that. Second story I want to tell you is, I had a man who I met at a wedding a fam with his family and they invited me to their house. And so I went to their house. They lived in a... The man especially came to pick me up in another city. He picked me up. He took me to his house. He was right out in the sticks. It was about an hour, hour ride on the motorcycle. He's a, he's a good driver. Good rider. He took me to his house, introduced me to his family, to his wife, to his uh, children. And uh, I stayed the night with him. We were discussing the Bible. We were discussing Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. And we were discussing uh, things of manifestation. And, you know, his... Uh, daughters, his two elder daughters, they said to me that they desired to study on and of course the father desired to make the daughters teachers but one daughter said she wanted to become a doctor. So I said to the father, I said you should uh, I, I do understand that you want to make your daughters teachers because his idea was that the teachers profession in this country is very well respected. And he was like, you know, there's many doctors. Of course, doctors is a good profession, but there's many doctors. But he said that, that uh, the teaching profession in this country is highly respected and teachers are given a lot of respect. So I'd like my daughters to be teachers. But I said to him, I said, look, you know, you have two daughters. If one of them wants to be, become a teacher, then that's great. Because one of them did want to become a teacher. But I said that the other daughter aspires to becoming a doctor. Not just a doctor, she wants to become a, a you know, highly qualified doctor and, and a surgeon. So, I said you should not uh, become a stumbling block in her way. Because if you become a stumbling block, you're only going to prevent her from her success. And that you don't want to be a stumbling block as a dad. So I said, my suggestion is I sat with the, with the family and I explained what they needed to do in order for them to be successful. And they are a praying family. You know, they get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and, you know, when I was sleeping in their house, they were up at 4 and they were singing songs, uh, singing psalms and songs to Jesus and they were, you know, reading the Bibles doing their daily Bible study. So they were really a praying family that got up every day in the morning on a set, set time and they established their time to study and pray. Which is great. Absolutely no problem. I think that's absolutely beautiful. So I gave them the formula. I explained to them, explained to the girls that this is what they need to do and this is how things are going to pan out for them and then I'll be able to guide them as they go along their journey, I'll be able to give them guidance as, as to how and when and they, if they hit any stumbling blocks then I'll be able to guide them there as well. So, after spending the night with them, I asked the question again to the heavens, was I manifested there? Did they manifest me? And the answer was yes, they manifested me because they obviously desired to see me and speak to me and ask me questions regarding the Bible and other things and they were the man was very happy to know that we are the children of Israel, Ben Israel. And absolutely no problem with that. 
And uh, from the Kohanim side, the arm um, from the Kohanim side was very happy to hear that, and he was very happy that that you know somebody from the Israelite clans was in his present in his house, extremely delighted, very very happy, and uh, and so you know that one night I spent there. You know, the four or five hours we we were talking in the evening because we got there a little bit late. You know, we got there about about uh, uh, eight o'clock, I believe it was eight nine o'clock, and then we spent about four hours, you know, discussing, and then they uh, laid out a bed for me, and I slept there, and then woke up in the morning and had breakfast. Then the the man kindly dropped me back. So it was very important for them to have spoken to the right person, and I can guarantee you that I have changed the, the direction of their life. And not only you know will these will this family get what they want, but they have a direction now on how to get it. So they're not going to be unconsciously creating. They will be you know these this family will be consciously creating, and that's very important. They spoke to the right person. They got the right information. Now they're on the uh, on the right steps to to creating their successes in their life. And you know it was it was amazing that uh, this thing actually happened because I didn't know the family, and uh, I just happened to see them at a, a wedding briefly. You know, like when they were departing. That's like maybe last five minutes of their stay in the wedding and. Uh, the family just happens to, you know, this this uh, family approaches me and happens to ask me that, can we have a sitting together? Can they see me? And I said, sure, yes, of course you can. And uh, and I said, here is my telephone number. And contact me, and we can then arrange a, a sit down and have a meeting together and discuss anything that you, you know, like to address. So very important in life. <clears throat> for us, as Israel, the children of Israel, those of you aspire, aspire to be the children of Israel, and those of you who joined Israel, it doesn't matter if you're not biological Israel, because once you joined Israel, you're Israel. You know, there's, there's no two ways about it. You can be from a Gentile background, you can be from any background, and you can be part of the family of God. When you're in the family of God, it doesn't matter what's your age, what's your ethnicity, what color you are, it doesn't matter about that. But what's very important is who do you listen to? Because there are numerous voices on the internet that tell you one thing and they tell you another thing and they tell you this and they tell you that. And you'll be forever doing all of that but you never get anywhere. So for instance, to give you an example, <coughs> there are teachers on the internet and, and I'm not saying that they are bad teachers, they have good intent good meaningful teachers they probably desire for people to be successful law of attraction teachers and they teach you different things they might teach you to listen to a subliminal or they might teach you to use a particular essential oil or they might teach you to do something else all you know meaningful within the sphere of what they are trying to teach you but when it comes to creation, or when it comes to goal setting, or when it comes to how to write your goals, or how to word them, they, they're not really giving you that help. Sometimes, some of them might, and sometimes they don't. But, you see, here is my take. You can be burning oil, like, you know, you can be diffusing oil, any particular incense, for the rest of your life. But nothing might change. You see, you don't want to be in the boat where you get a change every 10 years. Like, you know, you get one manifestation happening 10 years later. You definitely don't want to be in a, in a position where your manifestation, uh, your manifestation takes a decade. My goodness, that's a long time. You want to be in a situation where your manifestation, your creation, your goal, your desire, you know, needs to be met in a few months, within a year, etc. And if you're ill, you don't want to be waiting around for a healing for a decade. You want to be healed the same year if you're ill. 
So this is why it's very important to understand. And I wanted to say something regarding scripture. And it is as such. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11. It says. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. But will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So this is actually talking about imagination, this is talking about manifestation, this is talking about your affirmation. This is talking about the whole thing. You have the I am within you. The I am, as you all know, from Exodus 3.14, where God told Moses, go and tell the children of Israel that I am has sent you to them. So this I am lives within you. Now you have to set your goals. But you have to know what your goals are. You see, nine times out of ten the problem is people don't know what their goals are. You know, somebody might say, I want a car. But don't know how to write for a car. You might say, I want a house. But don't know how to write for a house. <clears throat> so I'll give you an example. The best way or the easiest way. And there may be multiple ways to do this, but I'm going to give you just a simple sum summary. You know, if you, if you desire to have a car and a particular model, you could do it this way. You could say, I'm so grateful that I, I am driving. I'm driving such and such car. You know, whatever that model is. I am so, I am so grateful that I'm driving a Ford F-150 truck. Or, I am so happy and grateful that I am driving a Ford F-150 truck. Or another way, I am very grateful that I own a Ford F-150 truck. So it has to be in the completed phase, it has to be in the past phase. So you have to move on into the affirmation, into the future. You're not going to say, I am going to be driving. You're going to say, I am driving or I am an owner already. So it's a present tense ownership and even a past tense ownership. You, you could even say, I'm so grateful. I am so grateful to have owned this Ford F-150 truck since last year. You could even say it that way. So it always has to be in the either past tense or present. And when you do that, this is what I encourage you to do. I encourage you to write out a list every morning. A list of maybe 10 items. You know, Depending on how busy you are, you get up in the morning if you're on a, on a morning, you know, if you're on a daily shift person, you get up in the morning and you write out a, a, a list of ten items. It, it doesn't have to be ten. It could be five. It could be ten. It could be more than ten as well. And you write out an item just as I described it. And to give you an idea, it will be, I mean, let me give you an example. So that I give you a real good example to understand. This will be a list it could be that, you know, you desire to become a millionaire, for instance. Not rocket science, and you don't have to be the, the most genius person in the world to be a millionaire. So you could just simply say, I am grateful to be a millionaire. I am happy to be a millionaire. Or simply, I am a millionaire. So, that's one way to write it. It's very simple. I am grateful to be a millionaire. I'm happy to be a millionaire. It is wonderful to be a millionaire. And I'm delighted to be one. So, that's, that's one way to do it. Now, if you have a car, particular car, model, make, you know, uh, let's say you wanted to do it, uh, drive a Toyota. I am grateful to be driving my Toyota Corolla. I am happy to be the owner of a Toyota Corolla. I am extremely grateful and delighted that I am driving my Toyota Corolla. Is there a number of ways to say it? 
And so it's very important that you understand the method of writing your affirmations. If you are looking for a house, purchase of a house, you could simply write, I am extremely grateful that I am the owner of a three bed, two bath house. Or you could just say, I am extremely grateful to be the owner of a four bed, four bed house. And you can omit the bathrooms because all, all houses come with bathrooms, you know, three bathrooms or four bathrooms or even five bathrooms. So, you could write, I am enjoying my house, my four bed house or my three bed house in such and such in city. You know, for, for my case it would be Pensacola. I'm enjoying my house in Pensacola, fully paid. So. Therefore, no loans attached to it. Or you could say, I am enjoying living in my three-bed house in such and such city. And I'm very grateful, very happy. And that will take care of that. That's your list. So you write this list out every day. Then once you write it out in the morning, you just jot down that list. And it doesn't have to be you know, the list don't have to be long wording. It could be short wording. Like I just explained to you, I'm a millionaire. You know, well, how many words is that? I am a millionaire. Four words. Or you might say, I am earning $80,000 a year. I am earning $100,000 a year. I am earning $200,000 a year. So you have to be that particular way is that you have to write it in short words. It doesn't need to be drawn out. You know, like you listen to some of these teachers and they say to you, oh, you could write it this way. And they give you a long drawn out one. You don't need to have a long drawn out one, by the way. It needs to be short, sharp, shift, you know. It needs to be clear. It needs to be short. It can be long, but it doesn't need to be that long. And so once you write that out, that list, you write it out every day. Here is my suggestion, how you do this. You write this list out day one of the month to day 22 of the month. Reason why I chose 22 is we have 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. This is our system, by the way. We write it 22 days of the month. Then we have about eight days left, or maybe nine days, depending on the month being a 31st day month. So you have eight days left, or nine, and you then do not write that list for those eight or nine days. So let's say you started today. Today is 23rd. By, I mean, on the 23rd, you will stop writing your list. You don't need to write, write your list. You don't need to repeat your list. You just rest for the next seven days to the end of the month. Like this is a, a month of 31st. So we'll rest till the 31st. Once you've done a 22 day writing, I suggest you rest till 31st of October. And now you're going to start again day 1 November. And you're going to write till 22 November 2019. And then you're going to rest till the end of November. But what you're going to do is you're going to read that list out loud if you can out loud, if not you can whisper and you're going to read it three times in the morning and three times in the evening. You might want to do it in the afternoon as well. Preferably if you can carry that notepad with you, you know, on your, on your journal. If you can carry a journal, you can do it. If not, if it's not, not convenient because you have to go to work and you're not going to carry a notepad, no problem. Leave your journal in the house. If you're a drive, in a driving job, you can put the journal into the side of your car. You can definitely then uh, speak the journal in the afternoon as well. You do it three times. Three times you speak it in the morning. Three times you speak it in the afternoon. Three times in the evening. You only turn it once. This is your list, by the way. And you're going to write it every day. As each item on the list comes to pass, you're going to tick it. And you're going to put it in your other journal, which is a completed journal, because you have a second journal, which will be my completed, my completed uh, tasks, 
or my completed goals. And in there you can put that down that such and such affirmation or goal was completed and uh, you're happy for that to be, you know, written down as, as uh, a evidence for yourself. That, you know, maybe you wanted to have a car and you got the car, you write it down and you seal it. Now you move on to the next one. So in other words, you keep doing that. This is a very powerful way of training your mind and bringing things to pass because as God said, my word goes out and never comes back void. Remember that. And you can do your imagination. Your imagination, you don't have to burn yourself out. You just do your imagination. Your, your imagination is to be done maybe one to three times. Maybe the max three days. You imagine for three days an item that you desire. And you repeat yourself over and over again a few times. So that it saturates your mind, your subconscious. And once it saturates your subconscious, you are now done the right thing. That's your creation, complete. You already sent your word out. You planted the seed. You have watered the seed through your imagination. Now you're ready to have that. Just be happy. And when I mean happy, I don't mean you've got to be, you know, smiling teeth to teeth, you know, side to side, like a joker. Just, just be confident in yourself. Just be confident that what you have established is going to happen for you in your life. Now you're consciously creating. You're consciously doing everything. You're not unconsciously creating. And it could be for relationships. Very important for relationships. If you want to establish a good relationship with the people in your life, then you do it with the relationships as well. You could be saying, an affirmation could be, I am enjoying a beautiful relationship with my spouse, and such and such, you know, name, etc. That would be a relationship goal. Or you could say, I'm having a wonderful relationship with my sister, or could be your mother, I'm having a wonderful relationship with my mother, and, uh, and you could leave it at that. That's a relationship goal. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to have a few relationship goals. And I know, I know I do. I have many relationship goals. So, you're going to have a few relationship goals that are very important. And you're going to pen those down. But remember what I said. Rather than be a unconscious creator and creating mayhem. And then saying, wondering, I don't know what the heck's happening. Where did this come from? I don't even recall this. But you know that it's happening because of your mind, because of what you're creating. You're creating it, but you don't know you're creating it because you're unconscious about it. So, do's and don'ts. Do not watch soaps that are, you know, always geared towards family relationship breakdown, uh, problematic relationships. So, be very careful about watching soaps like that because they can have a powerful effect on your mind. And they could affect you to be breaking your relationships. If you keep seeing a soap with, you know, families breaking apart, husband and wife divorcing, fighting, infighting going on, that will manifest in your life if you continue to watch that same program. It will actually affect your mind as well. So don't do that. Try not to watch uh, dramas like that. Make a habit of reading good biographies of people who are successful and make a habit at night before you sleep or daytime if you're working a night shift make a habit of, of seeing a good maybe a YouTube video uh, which has you know rich people and their lifestyle like a biography of a rich person so that you allow your mind to take in good things beneficial things. You don't want to go to bed with, uh, you know, miserable things like, oh, how this relationship broke up, and how this man, you know, he killed his wife, and how this man murdered his brother. You know, that, that kind of news, news items that uh, are such, avoid watching news all the time. Because when you watch news all the time, and you're always looking at negativity, it will have an effect on your life. So be careful also 
is what you take in will affect you positively or negatively and it will also affect your creation positively or negatively try to create positively try to remain jovial happy try to be on the good side and try try to remain away from negative dramas negative emotions negative people try to be with people who encourage you who want to see you succeed in your life try to be with people like that so it's very important that you understand that we imagine from the end and this is so we understand that when jesus makes the statement in the book of mark chapter 9 verse 23 when he says that if you can believe all things are possible to him that believes that believes in other words if you don't have the belief then you cannot really receive that item if you don't believe that you can be the owner of a car why would you receive a car so you got to believe past the point of belief that you can and you are able to receive that which you desire and i'm just giving an example as a car it doesn't have to be a car it could be something else it could be a house it could be a relationship that you desire it could be uh, money in the bank it could be stock shares you want to own it could be anything but this is just an example our our bible our holy books are replete with examples but the examples are at the point of your know, imagination being you know we're talking about when i say that we have god within us i'm talking about awareness that we have god within us and that awareness is very powerful when used properly there are many books that are written out there in you know, napoleon hills books laws of success 16 laws of success napoleon hills how to grow rich then there are many other books that you'll find out there numerous examples but again the books don't really hone down onto what i'm trying to hone down onto you know i'm trying to make it very simple and very easy for you to understand what the books are teaching so our books are are giving us examples of many 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 things things that we can do are practical and is not binding us to some religious text and making it out to be just spiritual and unfortunately if you have teachers around yourselves like that then i think you better just best to walk away from those kind of people but you'll not get anywhere in life you'll struggle and you're not really putting our scriptures to practical use which they are meant to be because you know they, these are family oriented texts these are for a family these are for people who desire to make good families and we have many people who struggle for employment for success in their life and for simple things but you don't need to struggle these are all available to you provided you put them to use as i just described it you put it to use and you can have it and so i like to say that uh, I like to encourage you as a coin in the gate do not be discouraged by people around you who tell you negative things be encouraged put to practice what i just showed you and you can start becoming a co-creator that god has meant you to be and you can co-create your life you can change the circumstances of your life you can make your life better but be careful about negativity negative people around you negative dramas negative shows negative things that happen try to try to have positive edifying things you know stories that you read things that you watch try for them to be a positive outcome for instance you know you don't want to go watch horror movies all the time because horror movies are not going to give you nothing positive and if on the other hand if you're watching movies that have positive outcomes then they'll be better for you so 
you know, read biographies if you can, good biographies of, of good people, uh, watch YouTube videos that are benefiting and are, 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 you know, showing you maybe material goods which your mind can ingest and benefit from, you know, from seeing biographies of people who succeeded in life, people who were not so well off but succeeded and became uh, rich people and they had to struggle through their life but they eventually got through. So those kind of things will benefit you and uh, relations in which, you know, encourage each other, always encourage each other, encourage your spouse if you are married, encourage your spouse, encourage your children, do not downplay your children, do not put them down, uh, do not try to control them unnecessarily, try to teach them to live upright, try to teach them that they can be successful and give them directions to be successful. Vision boards, I always encourage you to have a vision board. On a vision board, what is good to have, a, maybe put a picture of yourself even if you want on a vision board and put things around it that you desire. Car, house, you know, simple things of necessity that you desire and that you deserve. So a car, a house, these are standard items of living. Nothing special about them. You know, everybody deserves to have a house of their own and a car and then they can drive around, transportation, and of course, other items that you desire in your life, you can put them on your vision board. On the left, you know, you put items that are related to facts. On the right, you put items that are related to creation. So with that, I'm going to thank you. And I'm going to pass the mic over to Rabbi Kifa. Have a great Shabbat, a great week ahead. Shabbat Shalom, Shalom Shalom. Okay, recording is going. Bukashem. Tadaraba for that Rabbi Simon Asaf HaKohin for that great instruction and uh, 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 report on uh, your journey and your travels. I, I, I don't know what you all gleaned from that, but I hope you all gleaned something from what HaKohin was just uh, teaching on and, um, uh, you know, reiterating. Because one thing that you will note in our history is that... Uh, uh, our history is repetitive. How many of you all understand that? that? Our history is just repetitive. When you go through our books, things are repeated over and over. Situation, you'll see situations and occurrences happen the same way over and over and over again. Maybe a little bit different scenario, but you'll see a lot of similarity in our way of life, our way of living. And uh, on that note, as we uh, stay in tune with uh, doing great things and being around positive people and uh, just being a great doer and a uh, a light illuminator in your in your world, in your nation, in your environment. I want to read this testimony that came in. Uh, I'll give you. I'll read this testimony so you all can get a get an understanding about the power that you do have, the power that you do have, the power the power that you can well, uh, the power that you can use, utilize to benefit you yourselves and also those people and persons that are around you. Because at the end of the day, you must remember that we are all creations of the Creator. I want you all to understand that. Before I read this testimony, I would like to uh, put you all in a particular mindset and ask you this question here. Uh, where do you find your foundation? I want you just to think about that. You personally, when you look at yourself, where do you find your foundation? Think about that for a minute. Because don't just give me the surface answer. I want you to go deeper. I want you to go deep within yourself and truly, you know, ask yourself, where do I find my foundation? And can I back that statement up with evidence that my foundation is truly found while I'm telling you I'm finding my foundation? See what I'm saying? Because it's not just a bunch of lip service here, but it's about being able to, you know, have action, speak, and words follow. So I think it's very, very important that we do understand that. Where do I find my foundation? You know, I, I think it's important. I mean, so we say, Rabbi Kiva, when you say foundation, what do you mean? I'm talking about your very root, the core of your, the core of self, your core. Where do you find that? Where, where do you, when, you know, when, when, when all this else fails around you, when things don't seem right, or think, when things do, all, everything's going right, and you're, you're on top of the world, or you're in the valley, or you're on top of the mountaintop. Where, where do you, where is your foundation for? 
you know, everything that occurs around you, in your world, where do you find your foundation? You know, when you need assistance, when you want to give, you know, uh, esteem, you want to give thanks, your foundation, where is it found? When things do become rocky, because that's when a foundation is truly tested, right? Let's face it. A foundation is tested when 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 it's shaken. It. <laughs> you see, like like <laughs> like James Bond movies. James Bond says he takes his drink, uh, shaken, not stirred. See, when things are shaken around you, this is when you you, you truly test your foundation, right? I mean, so but I, I want to read this testimony because I find it very positive, very powerful. Because uh, it's it's a testimony that probably a lot of you have as well. And if you do have testimonies, I would encourage you all to not be shy. Don't be timid amongst the family to give thanks. Because, you know, testimonies at the end of the day are truly a barometer of where your foundation really is. And I'm talking about where do you find your foundation? Where is your foundation? Foundational uh, principles? Foundational uh, 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 characteristics? Where where are you rooted and booted? Where? Where do you find your foundation? So this testimony I'm going to read. This testimony is about uh, there was this young man. There was a, healing, a young man's healing that uh, had a shunt in his brain since birth. Now, a shunt is put in your brain because there's problems with uh, circulation. And so these shunts are put in to either leave circulation over or to reroute circulation so it's beneficial for your life. So these are called shunts. They're they're just like uh, valves for you uh, Home Depot persons. This would be like tubes that are put in to reroute things. You go a certain way to keep things flowing, to keep the flow going. And so this is dealing with circulation and flow. Uh, and tubes in the brain, that's some, some critical, some serious stuff. You don't play around with this stuff. Because if the tube, if the tube gets clogged or, you know, Swelling in the brain happens because the tube gets clogged. That can cause all kind of issues, even even up to death. And so this is uh, serious business. So this young man, uh, you know, he had shunt in his brain since birth, and and two and the two halves of his brain were collapsing in on each other. Wow. So we can already tell that hmm, there's some definitely some some definitely some circulation problems because. Anybody can you imagine your brains collapsing in on you on themselves? That's like uh, some kind of sci-fi stuff. This is real life. There's no science fiction here. They didn't even give him a good 50/50 chance of making it through the surgery because he was so weak. All right. So you're hearing all the doom and gloom, but now we're going to bring we're going we're going to bring the light in on the situation. So after this person did some affirmations, did. Uh, uh, did some affirmations on behalf of this this young young child. Um, listen to this. Uh, I don't know if this is, is related to this one, but uh, I'm I'm thinking that this. Oh, he came through the surgery from what I got from the testimony. This little boy came through the surgery just fine, uh, and uh, uh, the fifty fifty chance was definitely bumped up because the the the, the child did uh, make a. a, a is on the road, let's put it like this, on the road to recovery, Rukashim, Rukashim. And uh, uh, thanks to, if in part, to the co-creator that assisted in this, I don't know if names can be given out, so I'll just leave it like that. Uh, 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 talking about uh, the quote, quote quoted today, I don't know what scripture, what do you mean that he quoted? I don't know. But, you know, don't worry because it's, it's recorded. The lecture is recorded, so you can go back and play the lecture. But I don't know what particular scripture you're talking about that he quoted. Uh, because me personally, I didn't write it down. Because I can always go back to the lecture and listen to it. So you just may, you, when, we, when we queue up the lectures there on YouTube, you'll, you'll be able to have, have the lecture on there. So I don't know if this person... So correct me if I'm wrong. Let me get back to the testimony. Ah... Uh, is that the, the the boy is on the little the, the the child is on the road to recovery, and uh, no thanks and in part to the co-creator that assisted, uh, to doctor that Daniel that assisted uh, that assisted uh, in the in the uh, in the help because believe me you and I both know that this little child did need some help when you have your brain collapsing in and collapsing in on themselves 
I mean, that that's not, uh, that's definitely an environment to be seeking help. That of the uh, medical field and that of the spiritual realm as well. And that of the realm of our family, the realm of Israel. Because you all hold uh, great and well, great powers within yourselves. You need to remember, remember that. Don't forget. The next testimony was this. Then there was a 17-year-old who was kicked in the face by a young two-year-old colt. Colt, that's like a, a, a horse. Uh, not Colt 45 for you you drinkers, you beer drinkers out there. We're talking about a horse. It was kicked, this, this boy was, child, uh, I don't know, boy or girl, was, but was kicked in the face by a horse, basically. Anybody ever been kicked in the, anybody in this room been kicked by a horse, period. Let me just tell you, it's painful. I had a horse step on my foot one time. That was quite painful. So, I'm pretty sure that this was definitely, in the, in the face, you know, your face is very sensitive, you have bones and, you know, your, your particular great hardware up there, that brain, that great tool that we've been given by the Creator. So, uh, this is serious business as well. So, the 70-year-old that was kicked in the face by a, a two-year-old coat, he was life-flighted twice, once to a regular hospital, children's hospital, then he, he was released two days, listen to this, he... And then he was released two days later with only a broken jaw and a torn, a torn lip. No brain trauma at all. So, so, and then she, then she goes, goes on to say the guy was released and up in about a little over a week later. Baruch Hashem. So, now, the reason why this action, we see the physical action of this taking place was because behind the scenes was somebody, well, let's just say in front of the scene, was somebody doing affirmations, was a person who was clued up with how to properly uh, affirm something and desire something and to be able to wield that power that is within the individual as a family of Israel to take charge and change a particular situation. How many of you all believe in this room that you have the ability to change? The ability to change situations. Just like the climate is changing here in San Antonio. Oh my goodness. It's quite cold out here right now as we speak. That's definitely a change because it doesn't get cold here in San Antonio that often. But it's cold. When I say cold, it may be relative to some of you where you are in the world. But it's in the 40s here. That's cold in San Antonio. When we used to be in the 80s. We used to be in the 90s and 100 degrees. To doubt for your responses. By the way, you all have the ability to change. You have the ability within you to change, to be able to change. You can change situations, environments. Some, some people say, well, no, that's manipulation. It's not manipulation. You'd be able to change your situation. Somebody had a song out. Who was, I think it was Michael Jackson, Make the Change. You have the ability to change your environment. You do. Your situation. You can change from being a depressed person to being a what? A happy and joyous person. That's the ability to change within yourself. A lot of you, I guarantee you if I say, well, these past six days of labor, have you affected a change somebody's life? I'm pretty sure somebody will say, yes, I have. Put up a capital, put up a capital, let's effect or affect. Let's put up a capital A if you, uh, if you made, uh, if, you, if, you, if you actually affected somebody's life. These past six days of labor, not it may not be on the level as this this person that gave this testimony did, but you actually maybe there was someone that was sad down in the doldrums, you know. But you were able to talk to them and reassure them and encourage them, and now they're happy and they're on the road to their recovery and then they're on the road to their success. To offer your responses, by the way, you know, even Rabbi Zakari, even he may have people coming in his shop all the time, and I guarantee you, you go to an automotive shop. It is, there's a, a spirit of anxiety, a spirit of worry because they're worried about how much the bill is going to be, a spirit of lack because they're already telling the person, and, and Rabbi Zakar, if I'm right, please let me know. They're already thinking, well, I don't have the money to pay for this work that needs to be done on this car that I need to, to, to make ends meet, to make that dollar out of 15 cents. And so they're, they're already going in with a spirit of lack. A spirit of uh, anxiety and worry and, oh, how much money going to have to come out of my pocket now? Oh, I'm just worried about how much it's going to cost to fix this car. You see? And so when you can come in and infuse happiness and joy and in and, 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 and a calm, peaceful way, a manner of mannerisms, because you're, you're talking to them in such a way, you're telling them, look, it's going to be okay. You're going to get through this. 
you know, it's not as bad as you thought it was going to be. And that's what you see. Our thought processes take us somewhere where we really don't need to go. That's why I call his lecture, in my opinion, was so spot on. It's because it's all in the way we think and how we perceive within ourselves. Not how we perceive a religion. Not, not how other people perceive us. And a lot of times that's our biggest stumbling block as well as, as we talk. Come on, we, we're, we're real talk here. We're talking as family. There's a lot of people, you know, within your family or within your, your sphere, your circle of influence, you, you, you're more worried about how they think about you at one time or another. Maybe you were that way. How other people perceive you. And your whole life was run by that. What a horrible way to live a life, right? Oh, well, he said I was no good today. So, guess what? You take what he said about your being no good, and guess what? Guess what you manifest? No good, right? I mean, if you've been there at one time or another, because you weren't strong within yourself, so you were looking for strength outside of yourself. You were looking for the approval of other people instead of approving your own self. Put an A1 stamp on yourself. Approve yourself. Who cares what other people think about you? And may some of, some of you ignorantly right now still feel that same way. You need to deal with that. Guard yourself against being that kind of person. Because you'll be moody one day. Your moods will be all over the place. You'll be happy one day, sad the next. And, and then when you get to the root of the matter as you have discussions and conversations, everything is based on, well, what, what he said about me or what she said. Oh, my boss said I'm never going to get a raise. Well, guess what? You're never going to get a raise. Why? Because you manifested that. All because of what somebody else said. Oh, my coworker says nobody at this job gets raises. Nobody. Oh, you'll never own a business. Oh, you'll never be successful. You'll never open a restaurant. You'll never have children. You'll never get married. You hear all that? This is what other people will say about you. You see? And then, you know, they become haters when you do become successful. Why? It's because... Greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. Love request that I got a tape. They said that no one else can get one. Bruga Shem. Do you see? Because I can guarantee you luxury class didn't think, oh, well, because they telling me that, uh, uh, you know, no one else got a raise, then I'm going to believe them and, 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 and be like the sheep led to the slaughter and think the same way, then I'm not going to get a raise. It's so very important that we do understand is that we're greater than our situation. We're greater than that so-called problem that you think you have. You're bigger than that. Don't let the problem consume you. Overcome and conquer the problem, you see. Ruka Shin. You're greater. You're bigger. You're better. Man, you're super. You like the movie, The Supers. I love that movie, The Cartoon, because you are super. And to Darabha for your testimony, I don't know if you want to give give you give out names, but I, I won't do that right now because I haven't been given I haven't been given the stamp of approval. But it's a family member with these testimonies about affirmations that were done on the spot. These affirmations didn't take two or three years to come about. They happened in a in a short period of time. And the same can be said for all of you in this room as well. But again, just like our queen said in this lecture, it's all about it's all about you being able to uh, do it the correct way. Many people, I love watching success stories about folks, common day, everyday Joe Blow folks, who understand that they're just Joe Blow, Joe Blow folks that done some done something right. And continue to do it right. And they thus become a successful, rich, successful in relationship. Successful in whatever area they want to get successful in. You see? And they're the same people that put on the underroots just like you and I do. So again, the pattern that we see in our books, as I was telling you earlier, about being repetitive. Re repetitive works when you're re repeating the right stuff. <laughs> you understand what I mean? When you're repeating the correct formula, you, you can't help but be successful. Why do you think the family of Israel was so successful? Because they just kept repeating the right things. Did they stumble and fumble at times? Absolutely. But this is what I'm talking about. It goes back to that foundation, you see. It goes back to finding your foundation. 
And once you find your foundation, well, if your foundation is solid, if you, you have a foundation that's, 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 you know, that's crack proof. I've had foundations laid for many years in my life as I look back on my life at this midpoint in my life. I've had foundations. How many of you have laid several foundations? And some of them have cracked. And I say, Bruce Hashem, for my foundations that have cracked. But I've been laid, I haven't given up on laying foundations, right? But when I found a foundation that don't crack, <laughs> Bruce Hashem, I found my foundation that doesn't crack. And it, 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 it's crack proof. So this is what I build upon. And this is what our coin was saying as well, which I think is very important for you all to understand. When you find a foundation that doesn't crack, build upon it. You see? Rabbi Zakari is saying, I was privileged to bless a man living in his car with a free brake job. I, I was privileged to bless a man living in his car with a free brake job, called, called my parts supplier, and then donated the parts and performed the labor. I got the man a job with our company, Bukashim. Rabbi Zakaria, <laughs> Bukashim, I applaud you. I applaud you, brother, from the same mother. I give you applause because that's what it's all about. That is real life, Bukashim. You see, this is how we live our life on the daily. It's our lifestyle, the way we live. Great testimony for the children of Israel. You see, that's what it's about. And all of you have talents and abilities to where you're going to be able to use your talents and abilities to do great and marvelous things as well. Well, that wasn't nothing, Rabbi. That was just him doing No, that was very much something. What a testimony to the God of Israel and to our way of life and to our lifestyle. Now, all of you have the ability to do that same thing on the same level because all of you gave me them, you know, uh, you, you know effect, affect, uh, A's on this, so you all doing the same thing. I would encourage you to type in your testimonies as well, because you're making a change. You, you changed that man's life from his life that he had before. You made his life better, not worse. And that's how all of you need to see yourselves in the environments that you're in. Oh, man, do they know when Rabbi Kiefer's coming? They know it. Oh, I heard your voice. We knew you were here. And he gets so excited. Oh, we like coming into your room. We like coming in here. Why? It's because it's so, so, oh, you have such great energy. People like being around that. People like being around positivity. I'll tell you this. I went to this doctor's office. Let me tell you something about hospitals. Hospitals are a, a unique place, a unique institution. And I know probably, how many of you at one time or another have floated through a hospital? One in, put up a capital H. So you all know that a hospital is a, a unique place. Let me tell you what goes on in a hospital. Okay, number one, people get sick, right? Number two, people die, right? Number three, people are born there. Am I correct? Isn't a hospital like a unique place? Because you get all of these, these different, let's just say, realities. Huh? You get all of them. Uh, you see? Even, 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 even Nakshar is over here saying, yeah, I was born in a hospital. Bad? <laughs> you know? So, but you get all these different scenarios. You ever thought about that? The hospital is a unique place, man, because you get all all of this reality that slaps you in the face, right? And, you, and and not only that, but you get all of these different spiritual type of uh, let's just say entities, right? Because you know the spirit of depression is in a hospital. How many of you believe that? The spirit of joy is also in the hospital. How many of you believe that? The spirit of anxiety is in the hospital. How many believe that? The spirit of lack is also in the hospital. How many believe that? I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, all of this stuff is real. Because you get people that go in the hospital and they're worried about, oh, do I have cancer? Or you get people that were just diagnosed with cancer. You get people dealing with death and life on a daily basis in the hospital. Oh, you went to the hospital and you, your grandpa just passed away in the hospital. He passed. They took a, They unplugged him from the breathing machine and he, he has passed on to the next life, you see? Or in my situation, you get in there and you see the birth of your son being born in all his glory. And I say that in all humility. In all his glory, you see him being born. And, and so, so what's that a spirit? You get a spirit of joy, a spirit of happiness, huh? Just an overwhelming spirit of just my goodness, you see? Of just, yeah, I can't even describe it, of just creativity. 
Because believe in me and my wife, we, we, we created Nachon. We, we co-creators with who? The master himself. And brought forth who? Nachon. He's here in all his glory. With his big vocal cords. Bukashin. I give thanks. So we must understand this going forward. A hospital. A hospital carries many things. Now let me tell you this. Now this is a... This is... Uh, this is straight up. I spent two days, the past two days, visiting doctors and hospitals for this one particular patient of mine. And uh, I'm going to tell you something. This room that we were put in, you're going to find this very, very interesting. This room that we were put in, right, uh, you know, they have private rooms. You know, doctors, you know, you put patients in individual rooms. So you put patients in individual rooms. So this is what's going on. We go in this room the first day. And, you know, because of HEPA laws, you know, there, there's privacy laws. You know, you can't be telling other people's information to the person in the next room. This is called HEPA laws. So they're big on that. So they make sure that they secure, they close all the doors behind, behind them. When they come in, nurses come in, doctors come in, they close the doors behind them because they don't want anybody else hearing the information that's going out. You see? And that's very, very important. So they close. They, they they have to make sure that they close these doors, and they you have to close these doors. This is this is legal ramifications here. You know, somebody's getting ready to be you know, told that oh your baby has six months to live. Well, the neighbor next door, another room, don't need to hear that. You know what I mean? So they make sure they close the doors. That's very very important that they do that. So get this. Now the first day. You know, the doctor comes in, sees my little patient, then uh, we have, we shoot the breeze, we, you know, we share pictures. I tell you, when I go to the hospital, it's a family reunion. We get in there and we start, to, hey, here's pictures of my son. Oh, here's pictures of my family. Oh, your daughter's doing so well. Oh, here she is doing her recital, blah, blah, blah. So we're talking and, and just having a good old time because that, that's the kind of energy I bring. I bring that kind of energy of peace, love, and joy, and just happiness and full of life. And just, you know, infusing, just empowering people with just life and happiness. Because the first thing that comes in my mouth is another day in paradise. Oh, how you doing today? It's another day in paradise, baby. How about you? He's like, wow. Yeah, it is another day in paradise. You see, you got to infuse positivity with your words into people. So anyway, so anyway, so you, you, you know, we're in this room and we, you know, you know me, I already have a big mouth. So we're just talking and, and then even the other rooms are listening. They're like, wow. That room, they're having a good time in there. They have, you know, so, so, and, and they all know me. They're all, yeah, you know, uh, Lamont's here. So it's time to have fun. It's time to enjoy life. It's time to see the other, the better side of life. And we have conversations. I tell you, in these hospital rooms, exam rooms, we're solving the world's problems in there. I'm telling you, we are. We, we, we're solving the world's relationship. We're dealing with the China, America issue. We're dealing with the, 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 the Taiwan and Hong Kong issues. We're just solving world problems in there. We're dealing with election issues over here in America. I tell you, we just solve it. And, and, we, and, and we do it in such a, a, a happy way, full of joy and peace. But let me, let me get back to what's going on here. So the doctor comes in, and he closes the door. And he comes in, closes the door, says what he has to say. He finishes up, and the doctor and nurse leave the room. And I'm, I'm telling you, he closes the door, and you can hear clank, clank, because the door is closed, right? And it wasn't but maybe five minutes later that the door opens and nobody's there. The door just opens all by itself. Door opens wide. Nobody comes in. So I, I shut the door. And, you know, I tell, I tell the mother, I say, you know, this is a spirit. The spirit's coming in here. The spirit likes our energy, so he's coming in here. She didn't believe me. She didn't believe me. So I shut the door again. And believe me, when the door closes, it clanks. Like, clink. So it's closed. And then guess what? The door opens again by itself. Somebody, an entity comes in. It's a spirit. So, remember I told you about hospitals? Hospitals is a very unique place. <laughs> Believe you me. It's a very unique place. Because can we not consider a hospital, you know, there's morgues in a hospital. I mean, you understand that. So, there, there, there may be at one time or another, you know, you know, you know dead bodies in the hospital before they go off to, you know, mortuaries and all this, that, and the other, and the third. So, again, the spirit, you know, opens the door entity, whatever it is, and then I close it again. I say, it's a spirit. Welcome to spirit here. Your mother, well, he, he likes our energy. So the mom, she was starting to get scared. And then, you know, they're in their season of Halloween. Oh, my goodness. Like, you know, so everything, you know, oh, you know, this, that blood, guts, and all the other good stuff. You know, that's their season right now. So she's all freaking out. I'm like, hey, calm down. So we leave, and then we go back the next day to the exact same room, exact same hospital, exact same room. 
And do you know, Mishpahat, the same thing happens again. The entity, he wants to come into our room. And he comes in. He comes right in like nothing. He opens the door. He closes it. I close it. He opens the door again. I don't know if it's he or she, but just the, the, the energy does. So uh, the reason why I was telling you this story is because I think it's very important that you understand is that you and I are energy. And we attract certain energies to us in the, in the, in the physical realm. Like, you know, Rabbi Zakaria, this man was attracted to Rabbi Zakaria to get the necessary help that he needed. This is why it's very important. You don't shun people that come, that uh, are attracted to you. You see? Remember, Hakoin in his lecture, he was talking about what? He's like, his student, his student manifested it. So his student attracted Hakoin to his location. It may have taken some time, but Hakoin came to his loca location. Not only Hako did, ha did the coin come, but also books came with it as well. And so this student attracted this. He, 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 he called it in. He desired this. Now, my desire and my affirmation, I'll tell you this. I, I say I am positive energy. I am positive energy. And guess what came in that room, Ms. Bob? Those two days straight in a row. So now the mother's looking at me. And she already knows I'm children. I'm Israel. She knows. And I told her, I keep telling her time and time again. I said, you know what? Since I've been in your life, look at all the marvelous and great miracles like, like uh, 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 all of you are talking about. The marvelous and great miracles that have taken place. Things that have did not take place in your life before I came into your life. Before I was attracted to you and your son. This, and I'm not saying that to be braggadocious, but I'm just telling you, this is the God that I serve. This is why all of these great things are happening around me. Because I attract positive energy to me. So guess what's going to happen around you and everybody else that's around me? Positive things, you see? You understand, Mishpaha? You all have that same energy around you. It's like, how many of you like Star Wars? Man, I can't wait to go see the new movie in December. Me and my wife, we, we some Star Wars fans, baby. But it's almost like we have this force field. We have a force around us, an energy. That stuff is real. It's true. I don't care whether, you know, Hollywood is telling you through Star Wars, if you don't get it, Jedis. All of you in this room are Jedis, Mish Mishpaha. You're Jedi's. See yourself as Jedi, you, you Star Wars fans. I guess there's not many of you. I am. I thought I'm right in the same camp. I'm right where I write with you. Star Wars fan. My wife, she's a big Star Wars fan. Look at how you know why. So, it's very important that you understand that. Is that it's like this, this, this force field around us. It's almost like that lightsaber. But I got the lightsaber like all around my body. You have that type of energy around you. Now, your energy could be for good or for bad. You see, you can have positive energy just like you can have negative energy. You understand? And you're going to always, I mean, regardless, you see, and that's why Hakoi's lecture was so spot on, because it deals with you being able to uh, understand, either understand that you're creating it consciously, or you're unconscious and just things are just happening to you. I have been unconscious for a very long time in my life, and things were just happening to me. You know what I mean? I mean, you know what I mean. It's like, I would just deal with the things as they happened to me. <laughs> you know? Okay, this happened, I got to deal with it. But now that I'm conscious, I realize, I realize that uh, I can make things happen. Isn't that a beautiful? That's a big difference, right? Yeah, a woman just said Star Trek, but I'm I'm going to start watching the series. Okay, good. Big Star Wars fan. Big Star Wars fan. My goodness, I am a big Star Wars fan. I've been a big Star Wars. See, I, because there's a thing. I have this connection with the stars. Family of Israel. How many of you understand? Israel is highly connected with the stars. You must understand that. With 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 space. You must understand that. Look to the stars, Mishpaha. How did the wise men be able to know that the Master Yeshua was born? What did they do? Did they see it in, in on YouTube? Did they get a text message? <laughs> Think about this one minute. Did they receive a text message? What about Abraham as well? How do we confirm the birth of Abraham? Was it was it through a YouTube video? Was it? Was, I mean, come on now, Mishpaha. Let's get real. 
stars. So again, our connection with the stars is real. Don't shun the stars because you know what? You know what? Civilization will tell you, oh, that's evil. You, 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 you evil. You, you, that's evil. That's that's of the devil. Oh, forget that mumbo jumbo. Don't believe the hype. That's just mumbo jumbo. That's your heritage. That's who you are. So when I'm seeing all of this stuff happening in the galaxy and they going into hyper warp drive, I'm like, man, I want that. I want to be a. I'm, I'm a part of that. I, I, I just do. I, I'm telling you, our journey is bigger than just this Earth, Mishpaha. It's a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger. And and so and so for what? Uh, uh, Sima said, uh, Abba, Abba Abraham was the first astronomer. No, let's not go there. Uh, Simha, I'm going to give you a chance to redact your statement. Go further back than that. Look at our history and look at our heritage. I'll give you a hint. His name is in my son's name. <laughs> Knock, Sean. <laughs> there you go. You got to go further back than that. There you go. Now we're cooking with, now we're cooking with coconut oil. You see? Now we're cooking with coconut oil. You see, our history is deep. It's a rich history. And it's, and it's based on, just like Akoya was telling you, it's based on us, uh, it's based on how we lived our lives, our very livelihood. Today, these things may seem kind of foreign to us because we've been placed in the nations, hallelujah, we've been dispersed in these nations, and we, we adapted their ways, and we, we kind of forgot our old ways, Baruch Hashem, Master Yahweh, just like said in our books, we're going to come back to our ancient ways, to our forever ways. And that's what we're doing now. You and I are that first generation to do so. Your children will be the second generation to do so. Isn't that beautiful? So we're energy, Mishpaha. And so this entity that was in the hospital, I mean, totally attracted to the energy that was in our room. And I saw this. And I, and I, I don't know if you, all, you go to doctor. You know, when they close the door, the door is closed unless you open the door. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You, the, the door, the, the air conditioner just don't open the door in hospitals, Ms. Bahar. Although they do have some strong AC units in hospitals. But you have to open the door to open the door. And it's meant to be that way to, for privacy issues. You don't want the door fling open and you're in, the, you're in the middle of somebody getting a bed bath and then, you know, they, you know they're in their birthday suit. You know, they do these things for a reason. They, they make sure these doors are closed to prevent any kind of litigation from going on. You see? Door swing open and somebody's in a on a hospital toilet sitting down and you know and you know you, and everybody in the hall can see what's going on. See, you don't want these kind of things to go on. So I realized from the jump street, oh, this is an entity. This is a this is energy here. Oh, that's a, that's ghosts. You call it what you want. It's energy at the end of the day. How many of you in this room are afraid of ghosts? Anybody afraid of ghosts in the room? You shouldn't be. And if you are, go watch Ghostbusters. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so I ain't afraid of no ghosts. If, if you're afraid of ghosts, you need to go watch Ghostbusters. That'll help you out. <laughs> that, that'll really help you out. But you shouldn't be afraid of ghosts. Ghosts are just energy. That's just energy, man. And you're attracting certain energy to you. Some of you, how many of you in this room have had what they call, quote unquote, paranormal experiences? Anybody in this room? You put up a capital P. You say, yeah, boy, I've had some paranormal experiences or ghostly experiences or uh, experiences with energy. Anybody besides myself? Okay, to die for that. Atar has. I mean, it's, it's, it's just commonplace. And a lot of you, you, I guarantee it's happening around you. You just don't acknowledge it or you're just ignorant to it. But it is happening around you. I can guarantee you it is. Paranormal is your energy. It's got to be. You're attracting things to you. You're attracting either positive energy or negative energy to you, Mishpaha, right now as we speak. You see? Abru said, I've seen it in the camera at my friend's work just recently. It's real. I tell you what, when I went to Israel with Akohim and we went to the temple site, and we went down in like this, this whale. I mean, it's this big old uh, uh, whale area uh, below the temple. And there was no water in there. But we began to take pictures down there. We had to actually go down a ladder to get down to this well. This big old well. It looked like a big old pool. And we began to take pictures down there. And I began to take video. And when we went back to the room, 
um, from our day of, uh, you know, seeing the temple sites, I began to play that, and y you see all these white orbs down there, and they're just moving around. And I'm like, wow. You know, maybe God has left this place in ruins, but the spirits are still here. Angels are still there. They there. I don't know if they there to guard the place, or they just there. That's that's their that's their job. But they were there, and to this day, I still have the pictures to prove it. I have the pictures. And I'm like, wow, what an experience! And then all the pictures that I took with my camera, a lot of them came out orb like orbs. And I remember going to get them developed, and they were like, hey, uh. Do you want to keep these pictures because they're all messed up? I said, the picture's not messed up. I want those pictures because it had a lot of orbs and all. You can see these little white circle looking things. And it's just all over the place. It's, and it almost looked like it was snowing. There were so many of them. Like snowflakes coming down. You know what I mean? But these were entities, spirits. You see? And so I think these things are very, very important for us to understand is that you and I, we bring a particular energy, family of Israel. You bring a particular energy. Uh, uh, Abraham is saying, sometimes when I petition before bed, I feel like a lot of energy comes around. Oh, the energy is there. That's real. That's your angels there. It may be particular angels that you have invoked that may be there. But they're there. You know, do you know you can invoke Michael, the archangel angel Michael? You can invoke him, and he can really help you. <laughs> you can invoke him, and you can he can really, really help you. I'm coming to that understanding now. And he, they're there. They're there to help. What are angels there for? They're there to be helpers to us and guide us. You're the family of Israel. Do you know in our history, the angels have always helped us throughout our history. Has the pattern broken? No, it hasn't. You need to understand that. The pattern hasn't broken. You can invoke our forefathers. You can invoke... You know, angels, you have that ability to do so. Quite powerful stuff. They're here to give us guidance, direction, to help us in this way on this earth, to do great and marvelous things, not only for ourselves, but more importantly for others, so that they can see the government of God. Through who? Through us. Because guess what? Mishpahah, believe it or not, we are gods. Through Gashem. We come from the DNA of El Shaddai. Now, I want to read something to you real quick as we look at our Parsha. I'm just going to read this first verse because it's, it's just deep and heavy. And we're going to break it down in a particular way this day. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, Elohim powers created the Shemaim and the land. Stop. Full stop. Period. In the beginning, Elohim powers created the Shemaim and the land. Now, I just have one question for you. When I say we are gods... Because you're like, okay, first of all, how many of you believe the statement that, that I just made, we are gods? Anybody? Put up capital G if you believe that. Like, Rabbi, I understand what you're saying. How many of you believe the statement, we are gods? You, be, you believe that. You say, yes, Rabbi, I am a god. I affirm that. I am a god. How many of you believe that? Come on now. Don't hold back. It's time for you to become interactive and active. You say, I am a god. Now. I want you to, now, let's go back and read this again, because I think it's very important, because I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Many people miss this. In the beginning, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, Elohim powers created the Shema'im and the land. Stop. Full stop. Now, here's the question. As we look at our history, what did Elohim powers use to form Ha'adam? What did he use? What was the material used? Did he go to Home Depot and get some, get a two by four and a and a four by six? What did Elohim Powers use to formulate Adama? Okay, the dust of the ground, right? The material that was used was the dust of the what? The dust from the ground, correct? Okay, now let's go back. And let's connect the dots here. We're going to put the puzzle together here with the verse that I just read. And I want, I want the light bulb to come on. In the beginning, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, Elohim powers created the Shema'im and the land. The Shema'im and the land. Elohim powers created the Shema'im and the land, right? Well, what's on the land? 
Anybody tell me what's on the land? When you look at land, what's on land? Anybody tell me? Please tell me. You're looking at the land and you what's on the land? <laughs> Last time I checked, dirt and water, correct? Herbs, grass, plant, dirt and water. See, so when we say we are gods, do you get where we get that from? We get it right from Genesis 1 1. Elohim powers created. Just like Nakshan, my son, he looks just like me. He looks just like me. Why? It's because I was part of the creation of Nakshan. Everybody look at Nakshan pictures and they say, wow, my mother told me last night, son, your son Nakshan looks exactly like you. We took him to the store for the first time, the Chinese store we go to. Oh, my goodness. The little child. Oh, they, oh, they see, they see Nakshan. And, oh, he looks just like you. Just like me. Why? It's because I created Nakshan. Are you with me? Shane, y'all saw pictures of him. Who else did? Y'all, woman of ten. Uh, you are watching a witness. Does Nakshan look just like me? So, again... Listen to what we're talking about here. Now, I'm saying this to say this. Yes, I'm a proud father, but I say that humbly. But I'm saying it to say this. The master, Elohim powers, created the heavens and the earth. Right? So, just like I was a creator of Nakshan, and if the master was a creator of the land, like it said in the Hidden Truth of Grace Scrolls or the Abrahamic Faith Bible, what does that mean? If you came from the land, then you're a creation of God. Then God is in you. I want the light bulb to come on if you don't get this. You see, we talked about foundation. And this is what's so very important. When we talk about your foundation, where do you find your foundation? Well, for me, I'm going to give you my answer. I find my foundation right here in Bereshit, Genesis 1-1. It starts for me, my foundation is the book of Genesis in the beginning. And when people can realize that, humanity can realize that everything starts at the beginning, my goodness, that's a revelation in itself, right? I know it was for me coming back as Israel waking up out of my slumber. And that was a revelation to me. And the Imhokma told me, my will is my word. Well, where does God's word start? God's word started in the beginning. I had to realize that. In my seeking and searching, it took me right back to the books of Moses. That's in the beginning that we're reading right now. In the beginning, Elohim powers. So who was in the beginning, Elohim powers? He was, he was in the beginning because he was the beginning. The Master Yeshua tells you that himself. He said, before, me, I, before you was, I am. He was in the beginning. You see, and this is where a lot of people miss it. And how Cohen was talking about this in his lecture is that this is why you get you, you you spur off and you get offshoots of many religions. And this is why you there you have these two Jesus model, and that's true. You see, because you have the Jesus that was in the beginning, and then you have the new Jesus, the new flavor, right? But if just humanity would take things back to the beginning, don't 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 try to get on the plane or the train halfway on the journey. Go back to the beginning of the journey. Get on the train. You'll have a, a more beneficial journey when you start from the beginning, right? Brukashim. So this is why, thank you, thank you, thank you, Master Jesus of Nazareth. This is why we had to start in the beginning. The Master Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, talked about this all the time. He's like, well, what? Everybody asked him, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And he would always say, what? What does the laws of Moses say? He was like, well, let's take it back to the beginning. We're not trying to create no new mumbo-jumbo here. The law has already been established in the beginning. But what does the laws of Moses say? Well, the laws of Moses at the beginning. We're reading from it right now. The book of Genesis. Baruch born again. Yes, Jesus loves all of us. All of us. He loves all humanity. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the universe. So, it, it, so it's very, very important that we do understand that point. In the beginning. Your foundation needs to be in the beginning. Start in the beginning. Don't start in the middle. You see, because the master, Jesus of Nazareth, was in the beginning. This verse that we're reading right here, Genesis 1-1. 
in the beginning, Elohim powers created the Shabbat, the heavens and the land, or the heavens and the earth, if you read the King James Version. And all of you are offshoots of what? You were formed from the dust of this earth. From the dust of the earth you were born, and what are we told? From the dust of the earth you're going to do what? You're going to return, you see? You're going to return. You understand that? So yes, when I say we are gods, yes you are gods. And I'm glad all of you do have an understanding that you are gods. Because God created your creation of God. You're an offshoot. You have the DNA of El Shaddai. You do. Whether you want to believe it or not. Because you come from this earth. You have the same minerals that the earth has. Go ask your doctor. <laughs> if you do not have calcium and potassium. All the minerals of earth. You have those same minerals in your body. That you need to survive. Think about that for a minute. Come on now. If you can't say, oh me, say, oh my. <laughs> but think about that for a minute. You, you come from this earth. Isn't that a beautiful thing? That's beautiful. You will form. So that's already giving you confirmation that our Bible doesn't lie. It's true, Mishpah. It's true. You come from this earth. Luxury classic, I feel better when I drink mineral H2O. Oh, you should. I remember as a child, me and my sister used to play outside, and she used to, she had that little Betty Crocker uh, uh, baking little thingy. How yeah, I many of you girls had that as a child? Little Be Betty Crocker little baker? Oh, my goodness. So we would play restaurant. So I, I, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the one that's got to eat all of her cooking at her restaurant. And so she would make these mud, mud burgers. She would take that mud, she would take the dust, and she would put some water in it, and she'd make these mud patches. She'd say, here, brother, here. Here is your hamburger that you order. I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't order no hamburger. I wanted the fries. Oh, then she cut them up in little, little slits, and she made, she made, oh, here are your french fries. This is out of mud and water. And guess what? I would eat it. <laughs> and do you know, that was like the most healthiest thing I could eat. I'm eating the dirt. And dirt has many good minerals for your body because, hey, I am dirt. <laughs> Think about this for a minute. You see? Ain't that beautiful? So you already getting confirmation in the beginning that our Bible is true. We didn't come from no Big Bang, blah, 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 blah. If you believe that, so be it. I wish you all the happiness in the world that makes you happy to believe that you came from an explosion. I, 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 I No disrespect to you. I wish you the best and I wish you a happy and prosperous life coming from an explosion. The last time I checked, only thing an explosion does is destroy. It doesn't create. You see? You see? So you leave those people to it, in all due respect and all humility. I, I have no, I have no, uh, I'm not trying to shame you in any kind of way. If that's what you, if that's what you want to base your belief system on, then so be it. Have a wonderful and prosperous life. What, what did, uh, what did Mr. Spock always say? Uh, live long and be prosperous. He so, and he did a little sign with his finger. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. He take his hand. He did a little sign. And he'd be, live long and be prosperous. That's what I wish for all people. I wish that for all people, man. Live long and be prosperous. We're all human beings on this earth. We shouldn't be trying to segregate and discriminate ourselves against one another based upon our understanding of, or our belief system or what color we are. All of that means nothing, man, at the end of the day. Because we're all supposed to get on with one another. The Master Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, talked about that all the time. Love one another. As you love yourself. Well, some people don't love themselves, and this is why we have to, this is what, that's why they're in a dilemma, you see. I think it's so very important. Uh, Simha is saying, uh, would you not say that Hashem uh, thought manifested the utterances that created heavens and earth and thought forth Adam? Well, that's, that's a deeper understanding of it. But when we take that spiritual principle, somehow that you, I mean, you're kicking up a few echelons on me, but, and, and you, but you put it in the practicalities of, of what people can see, oh, let me take this dirt and form it. Because I guarantee you, all of you can go out in your garden right now and form some dirt and water, and you can actually make things. Am I right? My sister made that hamburger, that dirt hamburger that I ate, and them dirt hamburger fries. 
And they were made out of mud and water. But you can all go outside and take and you can form something. That's just the formation. Now, there's a two-step process to it, right? You see? I want to do a lecture on this one day. There's a, there's a formation process, and then there's the what? The animation process. All of you with me, you know what I'm talking about? So there's a formation side to creation, and then there's an animation side to creation. You see? And we all do these very same things in our, in our pursuit of our desires and our wants and our needs. Isn't that beautiful, Abra Hu? That's so beautiful. And Ibn Hoffman just gave that to me, by the way. There's a formation side to it, and then there's an animation side to it. In the same way with all of us in our affirmations that we do. In our creating. In our manifestation. In our bringing forth all our desires, our wants, and our needs. We do the same thing. What's the formation side? Okay, I'm going to write my, I'm going to write my affirmations down. You see, you're forming it. You're forming it. See, you doing just like the Master did. Just like Elohim Powers did. We put all this together. You got to form it up, right? That's why that journaling is so important. You see, you, you're forming it up. And you're writing it down every day. And then what's the next step? Now we have to do what? It needs that formation. Now we have to animate it. You have to visualize it. You see it. It's already happening. You already have that Denzel Washington husband. You already have that J. Lo wife. You already have that perfect relationship. You already have that son. You have that daughter. You have that house. You have that call. Whatever you desire that makes you happy at the end of the day. Because I, I want all of you in this room to meet your mark. That's a, I, I want that more than anything. My desire is that all of you meet your mark in this life. And you don't go through this life second-handed. It. You don't go through this life limping. But you go through this life walking on two feet. Standing tall. When you take your last breath, you'll stand before the Creator, and you'll be able to stand. Not limping, not limping in, not creeping in, but walking in, Brook Hashem. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the universe for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the God of Israel. That's what we're talking about here, Mishpaha. It's not a bunch of mumbo-jumbo religion, mumbo-jumbo scriptures here, there, everywhere. That's not what it's about at the end of the day. Because here's the question. How are you going to take that scripture and begin to take it and apply it in your life where it's practical? You see, you're forming a bunch of scriptures. And I was there one time. You're just forming a bunch of scriptures, but then there's no what? There's no animation to the scripture. You understand what I'm saying? There's no animation to it. You just have a bunch of words. But you can't take those words and put them into action. You see? That's where that's where the rubber hits the road for human beings. You see? We've been given the keys to the kingdom. The Bible is the keys to the kingdom. You have the keys. But are you able to unlock the door? You see? Rukashim. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the universes. You see? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Barbara, you see, that that's just what I'm talking about. You see, you, you take the scriptures and you put them all out of place, and you don't even know what they mean. You don't know how they practically apply. Because if you really understood it, at the end of the day, is that Jesus, who you love, he was a teacher. <laughs> he was a teacher. And he taught in the, in, in, in the temple, you see. So it's very, very important to understand that. A teacher only means rabbi. It's no big deal. We're all teachers. How many of you don't teach your children? You're a teacher. So be it. You see, we get caught up on the letter of the law and not what the language of the law really means and how you practically apply that. You can call yourself whatever you want to call you at the end of the day. It doesn't matter. Christ is our only master, but I am Christ. Christ is within me. <laughs> you see, there you go. You see, you can call up on mannerisms. You, I don't have to search for Christ. Christ is within me. I am Christ, you see. So again, that's, that's the issue. Now, you can stay put and listen. Or you can go about your way and go find your Christ or whoever you're trying to find. You can go look for him and find him. Or you can stay put and listen and maybe you'll get some understanding on how you are supposed to live your life. Instead of want to come in here and have, a, and, and have a battle over verses in the Bible. My goodness, you see. Have battle over verses that don't mean anything at the end of the day. How you live your life. Are you happy? You see, because the God that I serve, he's not, a, he's not an author of confusion. He's not going to come in here and try to confuse people. 
<laughs> he's going to tell you how you need to live your life, and you go out and live your life as you choose to live your life. You have to see them come in here being a, uh, a keyboard warrior, get behind the keyboard and quote some verses, and this, that, and the other, and think you fully understand them? Oh, <laughs> woe to you, woe to you. And you're truly lacking understanding on our history, our books. Little do you know that Jesus was a Jew. Uh, the whole Bible is, is, is the history of the Jews. It's our way of life. It's how we live our life. Now, people have taken it and adopted it, as we all know, right? And have taken it and have put all their mumbo-jumbo in there and have changed up verses and have made verses seem like it means this when it has no particular relevance to what they're even saying. Why? It's because it all goes back to foundation, Mishpaha. Where do you find your foundation? And if you don't find your foundation in the beginnings, as we're reading here in Bereshit, and understanding that you are a God, you have the DNA of El Shaddai because he created you, just like I created my son, co-created with my wife. You see, that's what's very, very important to understand. All of you are ambassadors for God. You speak for God. Can anybody pray tell tell me in any of these other religions that God came down and actually talked to him on a mountain? Think about that for a minute. What other religion did God come down and did the Christian God come down and talk to him on a mountain? Did the Muslim God come down and talk to him on a mountain? Think about this for a minute, Ms. Baha. <laughs> Think about it. We physically he came down in all his glory and talked to the people. And made a covenant with a people. You see, this is what we must understand. But again, a lot of folks don't. And this is why they hippity hoppity, they're here and there, and they're all over the place, you see. So again, foundation is key. Where do you find your foundation? Do you find it in the family of Israel? Do you find it in the family of Jacob? Or do you find it in the family of the Christians or in the Baptists or the Muslims? So be it. Because all of these different religions are going to give you a different, a different foundation. Now, here's the question. What foundation won't crack? <laughs> find yourself a place where you have your foundation that doesn't crack and stay put. Grow and learn and live a wonderful, fruitful, and a life that's full of abundance and joy and peace. Because that's what I desire for you all at the end of the day. You see? That's what I desire for all of you at the end of the day. Is that you have a life that's peaceful, happy. You're meeting all your marks. You're happy with a relationship. Is it with a, a particular job? Particular? I just saw this thing on the news just the other day where they're talking about, you know, 40% of all people here in America don't like don't are not happy with their jobs. I'm like, oh my goodness. Then why not you go why don't you just quit your job and go somewhere where you are happy? How many of you in this room are working right now? Put up a capital W. You say yes, Rabbi, I work. I work, Rabbi. Rabbi keep up. I have a job and I'm working, Brook Hashem. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm I'm doing I'm 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 doing all that I need to do to meet meet the criteria of taking care of my family. You see? Okay, enough with this scene tomorrow, enough with this texting and all this. Go start your own room if you want to, or you can stay put and listen. Okay, so uh, how many of you are working in this room right now? Any, anybody else besides? I guess Eddie's is the only one working, my goodness. The only worker in the house. Well, Eddie's is for you. So, so you're working, right? You have a job, and you're working, and you're doing what you need to do. And here's the question I have for you, Eddie's. Are you happy with your job? Are you working and are you happy? Because this is the, if you're not happy doing what you need to do, then don't do it. Go find a job where you're going to be happy. I bet you if I ask, Rabbi Zakari, are you still in the room? Rabbi Zakari, I know where your work is, automotive work. Are you happy? Does that work bring you joy to do that work? Me, my job, I don't even call it work. I, I just provide service, baby. I provide service and I love doing it every day. I give back. I like giving back, man. I'm, I've always been like that. I like being able to give back. Give back my energy, give it back. Put, put, put my hands on somebody and, and heal them. I like that. I like doing that. That, that, that. I tell you, that brings me so much joy. Rabbi Zakari says, indeed I like doing what I'm doing. Because listen, if you're not happy doing what you're doing, then don't do it. 
Find something that's going to make you happy and do it. Well, Rabbi, you don't understand. It's not going to bring in a lot of money. Well, is it really about money at the end of the day? Let's weigh it out. Let's put money and happiness and joy and peace on the scale. Which side do you want to be on? Huh? Do you want to be happy, full of joy, and full of peace? Or do you just want to make money? Because listen, I'm going to tell you, I know a lot of people that make money, and some of them have taken their life. They made a lot of money, but they're not here to, to, to enjoy it because they've taken their life. Because in the process of making that money, they become so stressful, stressed out, full of anxiety, full of depression. How many of you know people like that? Yeah, they, they're wealthy, they have money, but they're not happy. They're not, they, they're not happy. And put yourself, Rabbi, I don't understand. How can somebody not be happy, yet they're making all of this money? Because what is that telling you? It's a great instructional lesson here, right? Is that money can't make you happy. It can pay the bills, right? But does it make you happy at the end of the day? So you ask yourself the question, where's your foundation? How do you find your foundation? I find my foundation in the laws of Moses. I find my foundation right here in Bereshit 1-1. Understanding that I'm, I'm from, I'm dirt. How many of you heard that saying? We used to say that to children all the time. God made dirt. Dirt don't hurt. <laughs> That's why I used to eat all them mud patties, man. You ever heard that, that, that saying before? Oh, God made dirt. Dirt don't hurt. Yeah, I used to say that. Uh, you remember that one, Harbro? Huh, yeah, I used to say that all the time, Matara. Um, and I'm still a child, by the way. So God made dirt, and dirt don't hurt. God made the dirt. And guess what? I was made from the dirt. Group of shim. So dirt don't hurt. You see, so we have to get to a point to where, okay, yeah, my foundation is based upon this dirt. Oh, that dirt, everybody walking over, that's me. Because I'm going to stay humble and meek, and I'm going to let the God of Israel raise me up. Because guess what? When you look at dirt, dirt is used for so many things, isn't it? I can guarantee you, you're not going to have a good foundation without dirt. Anybody believe me? You not it, it, the Master Yeshua? He did a parable on this in, in, in what in the renewed contract of what they call the New Testament. If you build your foundation on rock, what's going to happen? You must build your foundation on dirt, solid, packed dirt, dirt that has been tried, tested, and proven. What do they use to make cement out of? Can anybody tell me? What's what's the ingredients to make cement? Don't you need dirt to make cement? So you must look at all these aspects. Everything that's standing right now is standing because of what? Because of somebody's dirt <laughs> and sand. There you go, Tatara. Thank you. Thank you for that. Somebody's dirt and somebody's sand. Just don't put it on sinking sand. So do you understand where we're going with this, Mishra? It's very, very important you understand. I want to ask you this question this day, and it's so very important. Abru says different elements of the earth. O oh, and D. From the earth. From this earth. You too are from this earth. The earth begat you. So it's very, very important that we be careful for this earth. That we do have dominion over it, which requires and and, 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 and gives us a lot of responsibility to be able to take care of our earth that's around us. That's why I tell all of you. I know seasons are changing. But all of you need to look to give back to Mother Earth. Plant some trees. Grow some flowers in your garden. Grow some plants in your house if you don't have a garden. But do these things. Give back. Give back to Mother Earth. Because Mother Earth has given to you. That's why you're here. That's why your house is on good foundation. Uh, Rabbi Zakari is also an expert in the foundation side of things. He'll tell you about a foundation that's not solid. Cracking foundation when you try to build your house on it. You see, because you have to look at you have to look at the foundation. And over time, your foundation may wear. If you neglect it, this is why you always got to keep your foundation solid. I was told by one of these foundational companies, I know a guy, he works in that kind of field, and he was saying it's always a good practice to water, your, to water the foundation, to water the foundation around your house. Anybody heard that before? Especially those people that live in like... Uh, 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 hot climates is good every now and then just to take your water hose and go around your house and just water the foundation all the way around your house. 
So that'll prevent the foundation from drying out, getting too dry to where it begins to crack. I was like, wow, that, that's a great bit of advice. Especially being here in, 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 in hot San Antonio, that's a great bit of advice. Just go around your foundation, just water, like you water your plants. Water, water all the way around your foundation. Keep the foundation moist. Don't let it get too dry to where it begins to crack. Kind of instructional, isn't it? Because if I ask you, how would you water your foundation? If your foundation was the Torah, was based upon the laws of Moses, was based upon the family of Jacob, was based upon Israel, then how do I keep my foundation from cracking? Any takers on that? How would you prevent your foundation from cracking? Any takers? Just like the, the, the you know, the foundation guy said, you got to put water on it. But what kind of water are you going to give it? The living waters. You see? You see where we're going with this? It's the same concept. We want to give it the living waters. We want to give our foundation. So this is why we want to, you know, stay full court press on our, our, on our what? Our affirmations, on our desires, on our wants, on our needs. And facilitate and keep repeating the same process because you know when you put the you tick off the, the you know your your desires that are met when you meet them you tick them off and you put them in your book that completed book you look you you look at your completed book and you go through and you're like wow all these things happen that gives you motivation thus you you can read your completed book sometime and get get the water that you need you're like wow so I can even do better than this if this can happen then I can do more things. It gives you motivation, gives you fuel to want you to continue on. Once you meet a desire, once you meet your, your you know, affirmation that you want to met, once it's, once it's manifested, you take it off, put it over there in a completed book, and then you, you come up with some more. There, there's always something more that you want out of life, and it should be. Don't just settle with life. Always want more. You can always help more people. You can always start a company that can help more people. You see, because in helping others, you serve yourself. Service of others is service of yourself. Think about that for a minute. You see, not everybody has that foundation like Rabbi Zakaria. That'll say, hey, let me help this man. I'm going to put these brakes on for free. Why? That's his foundation. Now he's building upon it. He can build a house on it now. But you must lay the proper foundation. Foundation is key. This is why you as students of human nature, as you study human beings, try to understand where their foundation's at. And if it's not... If it's not with the family of Israel, then you can already make a a, 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 a a judgment and say, wow, well, okay, now I know what I'm dealing with. Now I know what angle I need to come at this person is because already his foundation is shaky. So may I, maybe I can give him some foundational truths that's going to help him, help her along the way. So that she can get to the point of building and laying that concrete foundation that's going to be solid and be able to withstand all times. You and I, we can withstand all times. There's nothing that can phase us. The thing about it is, is we can't allow things to phase us. But you, you must go, you must go in already knowing that there's nothing that can phase you, Mr. Bahar. I want you to understand that. Why? Because in the beginning, Elohim powers created the Shemaim and the land. You're a subset of the land. You're a subset of Elohim powers. Thus giving you the DNA of El Shaddai. And the DNA of the land, by the way. Isn't that beautiful? You see? See? So you have the formation and animation. That's you, in a nutshell. You're the formation and you're the animation. Animation comes from the most highest Elohim powers. Formation from the land. Do you get it? Formation and animation. Now, you take that and run with it these six days of labor. That's, that's your makeup, your formation. Your, what are you going to form? Then animate it. You have the ability to do both. It's almost like a mother and a father relationship. You have the genes of both your mother and your father. Nakshan may look like me, but he has the DNA of his mother as well. And I'm going to say that loud too, so that way I don't get karate chopped in a minute. Because it's not just all about Rabbi Kiva. Yeah, he may look like me, but he still has the DNA of his mother. His mother is beautiful. So now Sean is a very handsome boy. I had to get that on record, Mr. Baha. So I think, I think it's very, very important that you understand that. That's, that's, that's a beautiful union, isn't it? 
You say, well, how could the earth be? I'm not saying it because God, the Elohim powers, created the Shema'im and the land, which you may call the earth. But he had affinity and so much love for what he created. And everything that you create, you love it. I hope you do. Yet I hear many times in the grocery store, I wish you wasn't born. You was a mistake. How many of you heard that before? You hear it in the store. I'm like, my goodness. How come he talked about in his lecture how you don't need to put down your children, but you need to edify them and raise them up? But what am I hearing in my world? Oh, you was a mistake. You was an accident. I wish you weren't born. Any of you ever heard that before? People say that, man. I'm like, wow. 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 But that's real. Because, you know what it goes back to? Don't be angry at the person. I want you to take it back to the foundation. How did they find their foundation? And it goes back to what Akoi said in this lecture as well. Who do you listen to? And it goes back to what Akoi says as well. These are unconscious people. They're just unconscious. Unconscious people. And they're just being dictated by events. They react to events instead of, you know, creating the event. Thus having a reaction. Wow, listen to that one, Abaru. Listen to that one again. I don't think I can say that one again that way. But it's so true. We have the ability to be able to create the reaction, thus getting the event. No, create the event, thus getting the reaction. Most people uh, create the reaction, and, and then they deal with the event. You get it? We're powerful people. We hold the keys to our kingdom. And they're nice and shiny. Understand that going forward. And you do yourself a great service. Not only to yourself, but to those that are around you. Because you have that power. You have that ability to be able to weld whatever you will. Think about that. To weld whatever you will. Here's the question I have for you this day. What do you will? Weld it. What do you will? Well, I will that I start a business, then, then will it. Weld it. And have the ability to do so. You can make your business real. I, I, I will a relationship, then, then, then weld that relationship. Take it. It's yours. Don't go kidnapping nobody. But it is yours. You have the proper tools to be able to just call it in just like you want it. Just room service. Just like you order. And I know all of you order your meats well done. Because you're part of my family. And that's how we eat our meat, right? Well done. So when you get that steak, the steak is going to be well done when it comes in, you know, you know, with the room service. Oh, it's well done steak. And that's what the master wants. He wants everything for you well done. And when you stand before the master, the master is going to say, well done. Ruka Shem. That's just real. Why? Because you're part of the family. Your foundation is founded upon the solid, solid found facts and, 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 and truths that, that built the universes and the Milky Ways and this earth and the planets. That's the connection that you have, Mr. Fahar. And it's a beautiful connection. Now, I'm going to get ready to close, but I want to talk about a few things here in a minute, which I think that will put our focus on the situation at hand. You all understand that we are in the nations, right? And, you know, they're coming up on their on their holidays. You all know that. You all, all of you know that. It's that time of season again. Now, I want to encourage you all to uh, be on guard. Against not shaming anyone during this time. Uh, Daniel said, you, please, can you fill in the last statement? Formation, writing, affirmations. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the, you're talking about the, uh, you know, there's the formation side and then there's the, anima and there's the animation side. You're talking about that? The formation of writing your affirmations. Uh, you, what are you talking about? You want, you, can you be more, more specific? The formation side is the writing of your affirmations, is the 
is the uh, 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 you know uh, uh, the, your journaling, which is what we call our journaling, uh, and then the affirmation side of. I mean the the affirmation side. I mean the uh, and, and the affirmation and the um, animation side would be when you begin to visualize. And you see things just like I call you say during this lecture. When you begin to see things as they already are, you you, you see uh, uh, you see things as they already are in the past. Oh, I'm already driving that new car. I'm already living in that new house. Matter of fact, I'm taking a, in, in your visualization. You see yourself taking that Calgon bath in that big old bathroom. You understand that big bathroom that you have with the big bathtub. I like those old ancient. You know those old ancient bathtubs that you see in the western movies where it's just the tub sitting there and they pour water in there. Oh wow. Uh, what's the name of those kind of bathtubs? They have a name for them. I really like, I really like those kind of bathtubs. So you see yourself you're in that bathtub, and you just, you are, you see, your 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 future as you as you begin to call it in, it actually becomes past to you because you're already doing it. That's the that's the animation side of it. The animation is the realness of it. it becomes real to you. You smell the leather in that new car. That you drive it, whatever brand it is. You want the leather seats, and you you could actually smell. I'm I'm, I'm driving, and you smell it, and you see yourself. You're in your car, and you at the stoplight, or you see yourself. You 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 you're at the you're at the car wash, and you're washing your car, and you put the armor all on the tires, and it's beautiful, man. You're shining up, and everybody looking at your car, and you're super happy, and you get thanks, and you see yourself. I can see you right now. You take your finger, your one finger, and you point it up towards the heavens, and you say thank you. And everybody around there looking at you, but you pointing your finger up and you saying thank you up to the heavens, and you saying thank you because it's not me, it's there, it's above. You give it. I'll tell you. So you begin to see these things. So you animate, and you just like our queen said, you take how you want to live and you live it now. You are. It's already in the past. You already living it. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm driving in that my new Mercedes Benz, black with the tinted windows. You see? So I, I think it's very important that you get to that point because you're an animator and you're, you, you formate and you animate. You do both. You're co-creators, yet at the same time you can create whatever you want. You become the creator yourself. Whatever, your affirmations, your, your, your journaling, these are things that you want to, you're forming up, you're forming it. You're forming it. And then you animate it by your visualization. You see it, and you visualize it, and it's happening. In your meditations, it's just real. It becomes super real to you. You already have it. That house that you have on your vision board, you're in it. As a matter of fact, you're cooking that curry chicken in there right now, and it smells so good. And your little daughter, your little son, your dog is running down the stairs. and everybody's, You see what I'm saying? It becomes real because it is real. Right, Israel? Because it is real. Whoa, that's a revelation. It is real, Israel. It's real. Everything you desire for yourself, Israel, can be real, Israel. Because it is real. You make your world. You can shape your world. You can make your world. Remember we talked about earlier, all you have an effect on the world. You have an effect on the world. Your world. This woman that gave the testimony, she said I could use her name. Yael Woman of the Tent, that's her name. The testimonies that I read earlier from Yael Woman of the Tent. Yael Woman of the Tent for giving me permission to use your name. But she created that whole environment and situation for positivity. She did that. While the whole world it wants to live in fear. and I mean, cause, come on. You know, I call myself... The Jewish Willy Wonka, because that's me. I love chocolate. But why do you have to associate giving out sweets and everything with, with fear and horror on this Halloween? I'm not understanding that. People being, because, you know, I was watching the news last night. And uh, they were saying that there's this one place in Tennessee. Any of you heard of that? They were talking about this. There's this hotel where you have to sign, like, all these waivers. You have to get permission and consent from a doctor to go through this haunted house. Any of you heard that story? I thought that was very interesting. But at the same time, I was like, well, why would somebody want to spend all this time and energy on going in a place to be, be scared out of their hoops 
but they said if you make it out of this house, they're going to give you $20,000. So someone with no fear, you know, and wanted to make some quick money, <laughs> you know, go through this haunted house, right? Get you a quick 20 grand, invest it how you want to invest it, and multiply that money quicker than quick. That's what I'm thinking. But while other folks are thinking, well, well I want to go in here and see if, if, if I could be just scared out of my wits. Why? God hadn't given me a spirit of fear. I don't fear anything. But why would I want to go in through there and have somebody... And, and, and you got to sign all these waivers. you got to get a medical, physical. you got to get a consent, sign, lawyer, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I was like, to go into a, a haunted house. Because people, I, I, because they, and, and I'm looking at Halloween. I'm just looking at it. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to understand the human nature of Halloween and why they do it. Is because people like fear. And I came to this conclusion. Is people like to be afraid. Think about that for a minute. People like to be afraid. They embrace fear. Do you see what Halloween is? In it? Now I know all the innocence. You know, little children want candy. Hey, I'm all for that. I'm Willy Wonka when it comes to the candy side. You see? But when you look at it, and it's like, well, why are all these gory little so-called devils and all this, and these monsters and zombies and blah, blah, blah? You see, because people like fear. They, they embrace fear. Thus, this holiday is popular. So you can go to this, you go to this haunted house. You can Google it. Go to this haunted house in, 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 in Potency. If you can make it through this haunted house, there's 20 G's for you right there. 20 G's. Now, <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. If you want to go try it, so be it. But that's that's 20 G's. You know, now, when you're doing your affirmations and all this and that, you know, how this money comes to you for those of you who are, you know, affirming money and, and desiring money, there's many different ways. And I just gave you an example of another way to get 20 quick G's. <laughs> 20 G's, go through a haunted house. 20 G's, you make it through. So you look at all these things, you say, wow. And that's, that's how I look at, as a student of nature, I sit back and I look, well, what is, the, what is the baseline foundation of Halloween? Can anybody tell me? What's your opinion of the baseline foundation of Halloween? Because remember, we're in these nations. They're going to do what they're going to do. Don't be upset. And this is what I want to talk to you guys about. Don't be upset that they're doing all these holidays and the, what they mean and what. That has nothing to do with you. You're in these nations and you're a stranger in their land. Now, what I want to try to do is understand, well, why do they do these things? What are, what's the underlying, what's the foundation behind these things? I like to get to the foundation of everything. What's the foundation behind it? And you know what I found? Is that the foundation of Halloween is fear. That's what I, in my assessment. Anybody else, you, you think about these things? I mean, because, I mean, why do these actions? Why go through these, you, you know what I'm saying? Love your class is darkness. Okay. Yeah, and you know what? Some people embrace darkness. And you say, so be it. They embrace darkness. And so be it. That's why, you know, they, they celebrate that. And you got to leave them to it, huh? Right? They celebrate that. Uh, so, again... You know, I, I, you know, personally, you, you want to know what I do? I wait till after Halloween, right? And then I go in there and rack up on all the chocolate because it goes on sale. <laughs> so I, I go in there and clean up after Halloween. That's what I do. I'm telling you. I've been doing that for the last couple of years, Abru. And I rack up. I make out like a fat cat. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, I, wait, I wait till after Halloween, man. I tell you what. Boy, they start marking down all that chocolate. And guess where Willy Wonka is? I'm right there collecting it up. Oh, yeah, trick-or-treat to you two on, on the way out. <laughs> that's just what I do. That's just, that's just me personally. That's what I do. But again, you see, and, and Daniel, you're absolutely right. I'm glad you made that point. You see, it's all where your foundation is because if you look at darkness, and the first thing, and we talked about this last lecture, the, 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 the first thing that they'll do is they'll say, oh, yeah, you know, you think darkness and you think bad. Well, darkness is really not bad at the end of the day. Because you you read the rest of uh, the book of Bereshit in the first chapter, you understand that in the beginning it was dark. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so again, 
it's just it's just how you perceive things. You see, and it goes back to your foundation. Where's your foundation at? Your perception of it. And the rabbis that went through Hakohen's course when it when he taught the the course for the rabbis. Oh, you have an understanding of that verse, and that verse is really heavy when you understand it in that aspect. You see. And it, that's just real heavy. I, I think, you know, the Abrahamic Faith Bible kind of elaborates, touches on it a little bit. Maybe have a footnote here and there. But I don't think they go in it, it doesn't go in it as depth as you got from the training that we got from our Kohen in dealing with the, uh, that verse, dealing with the, the, the darkness over the expanse. My goodness, that's heavy stuff there. So I think it, it's, it's, it's very, very important that we, we, we examine things from the from the understanding of where people are because again we cannot examine and and do proper study on human nature from uh from a a, a, a hebrew point of view because you remember you're a sojourner in their lands so as they have their thanksgiving as they have their halloween as they have their christmas and all this uh, this other stuff yeah hey sit back you know but be a participator you know, hey, somebody want to, don't sit there, ah, you, you just, it, condemning their little, you're in their land. Be respectful of the holidays. Be respectful of the holidays. Somebody tell you Merry Christmas, tell them Merry Christmas. So be it. Wish them a happy Thanksgiving. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. A wonderful time in your celebrations. I enjoy it. They want you to go over and eat, go over and eat. Just don't, just, I don't want to, don't, just, just don't go over there eating a pork chop sandwich. Make sure they have something that's suitable for you to eat. Or matter of fact, bring bring some of your dishes over there. You know, bring them some dishes, you see. Bring some dishes and let them try some of your Hebrew cooking, because I know your Hebrew cooking is off the charts. You guys make them oh, I tell you, I know your Hebrew cooking is off the charts. Bring them something nice, bring them a nice cheesecake or something. You know, again, it's important that we do these things and we have this understanding. You know? Little girl come knock on my door, oh, she's gonna get a, a Reese's cup. Reese's Cup, hey, you enjoy your Halloween, little girl, have fun, you see, so we must understand these things, little boy, I don't, I don't, I don't t discriminate, little boy, little girl, doesn't matter, grown folks coming in there, knocking on the door too, you can have it too, no problem, but see, the, the, this is where we, we, we need to get with this, we need to understand is that we need to continue to understand these nations that we're in, but at the same time, yeah, don't go running them under the bus, that's not our place. This is not the country of Israel. So we don't come to them with the laws of Moses and judging them based on that law. Their Gentile law system is doing them just well. So you leave them to it. And you abide by the Gentile law system as well. It's so very true. So we must understand this point. And I want to, before these holidays really get into full effect, I want you all to understand that. I want to bring it to your re remembrance. Don't get high and haughty. Stay like the dirt. Stay low. Stay low. And if you feel like somebody's stepping on you because you're the dirt, don't worry about it. God made dirt and dirt don't hurt. And guess what? <laughs> you have a great big brother that's looking after you, that can deal with you and deal with your situations, you see. My daughter, she, she wants to play the piano. She wants to be a pianist, and I'm all for it. I'm totally, totally on board with her doing whatever makes her happy, right? But she's getting a lot of naysayers telling her, oh, you can't go to this school. You can't do that. You can't, you're can't. you not going to be a great piano player, blah, blah, blah. All these naysayers coming from teachers and, and, and students. And, and so that's, that's, that's tearing her down. So when she comes home, she needs to refuel and get positive energy because all the negativity around her. So you know what I told her? I said, look, we're going to come up with a statement for you. When those thoughts start coming in your brain, I want you to say this. Just shut up and play. Shut up and play. Shut up and keep playing the piano. Don't worry about all these thoughts. Well, he said, and she said, I can't do this. She said, I'll never get into this school because I'm not good enough. Blah, blah, blah. I said, no, no, no. When those thoughts start to entertain, you start to entertain those thoughts, you tell yourself to shut up and play. Just shut up and play the piano. Shut up and play. You see, this is reality, man. And again, I'm not going to try to tear down my daughter's, you know, as, she, as she's developing her foundation for herself. And I, hopefully she takes that mantra and she applies it in every area of her life. Shut up and play. You heard the model. I got that from that movie. Somebody, is there a song called Shut Up and Dance or something? 
So you just shut up and play. Shut up and play the piano. And, and, I, and I encourage all of you to do the same thing. Whatever people are telling you can't do and you want to do it, shut up and do it. Shut up and start that business. Shut up and have that husband. Shut up and have that wife. Don't let your mind talk you out of your inheritance. Don't let your mind talk you out of meeting your mark. You got to start to look within and let your subconscious tell your mind to shut up and just, we're going to do this. However you want to do it. We're going to meet your desires, your wants, your needs, anything that you want for yourself. You have the DNA of El Shaddai. You have it. You are God's. You are the, just like I call you said, the very representation of God on this earth. Now, please, somebody tell me, did I did I miss the the YouTube video or the memo, or did I miss the newscast? When is the last time that a god came and talked to a a, a group of people? Any god, and he comes and he talks to a people, and he comes in all of his glory. And he talks to a people. And he makes a covenant with a people. Can anybody name any religions that they used to be in? Please, just for kicks and giggles. Any religions? Can you name the religions that you used to be in at one time or another? Just, just name them. Just name them. Name them. Okay, luxury class is Christianity. Luxury class, does this happen in Christianity? Eddie's, did this happen in Catholicism in the history? In the history of Christianity, did this happen? Eddie's, in Catholicism, did this happen to where God came down and, and he talked to the Christians and he told them, look, I'm going to make a covenant with you. You and I are going to gonna come into a covenant. You do this, I do this for you. Anybody else? Any of their religion? Anybody? So again, here we, here we have it. Here we have it at the end of the day. This is where we are. Abru uh, says a, a corporate meeting. Bruka Jim. We're unique people. Peculiar people, as they say in the King James Version. Special kind of people. Hold to that speciality, you see. Wasn't Abrahu called the first Hebrew? Absolutely he was. You're absolutely right, luxury class. That's where we get the name from, Abrahu, from Abraham. Aren't you from them Abraham people? Yes, the father of our way. So when everybody claims to have the faith of Abraham, who really has it at the end of the day? Think about that for a minute. Abrahu. Matter of fact, I'm starting up a business with that name, by the way. It's going to have that name in it. Abrahu. Beautiful name. Uh, that's why I like saying Abrahu. Abrahu, you picked a beautiful name for yourself in this room. Beautiful name. Abrahu. Powerful behind it as well. Much power. So, think about that going forward. It's so very important that we understand who we really are. Who we stand for. Because you're representing some... It's bigger than you. And you must understand that. It's bigger than just yourself. You know, you got the backing of Abrahu behind you. You got the backing of Moses behind you. My goodness. I think it's very, very important that you see that. Yeah, I'm getting ready to wrap it up, luxury class. I'll definitely give you the mic. It's very, very important that you see that. Because our foundation is based on Abrahu. That's our foundation. Our foundation is based on Moses. That's our foundation. Our foundation is based on Jacob. That is our foundation and family. By the way, Bruch Hashem. So, just, I'm your biggest cheerleader as I always be. Let's continue to just stay in there and keep pressing on. Pressing on for our marks. When you finish making your mark, make new marks. We have a wonderful gift of life that we've been given. Let's not waste it. Let's not be unconscious, because we're conscious now. You guys are wide awake. Or as I'm, I'm hearing on TV now, they use the word, the, the, the vernacular, woke. You woke. <laughs> I was like, wow. You woke. Yeah. You guys, Israel, you're woke. You're woke. You're not sleeping anymore. You're woke. You realize. Stay woke. Yes, Daniel. Stay woke. Don't go back to sleep. Much of Israel, they woke for a minute and then they went back to sleep. Stay woke. 
Okay, luxury class, over to you. After luxury class, is there anyone else you want to give statements, you want to give comment, you want to give testimony? Please do so if you want to have it recorded in history. Because you got to remember, Ms. Baha, we're here in this forum. And I thought about this the other day. But, you know, these words, these classes, are gonna, they're going to outlive us with technology. You know, if the master so desires to linger, I mean, people will be listening to these lectures you know, into the hundreds of years. Think about that. Isn't that heavy? So if you want your testimony put in history, then say it. Tell it. We'll read it. Believe me. Or you can talk just like just like luxury class will do. You can speak. We're family here. Don't, don't feel like you don't have a say or you don't have a voice. You do have a voice. You're Israel. Stay woke. Progressive. Over to you, luxury class. When luxury class finishes, then I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up, and we'll 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 call it a Shabbat day, Baruch Hashem. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the universes. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the God of Israel. Thank you for allowing me to interact. Uh, two points I wanted to make. One, uh, going back to um, you know going for that pay raise, so to speak, in a, in a place that was uh, notorious for actually cutting commissions, cutting pays. I had been um, I was a fairly new employee, doing quite well, and I was uh, falsely accused. I was, they, everybody considered me a model employee, so to speak. When I was to discuss something with one of my colleagues, getting their opinion on a contract I was working on, and somebody that did not like me for without cause, so to speak, um, uh, called my supervisor and said that I was being too social on the the uh, sales floor, but I was actually only speaking briefly about a contract issue. She didn't know the context of what was being said. With my, you know, me and my colleagues, so I was falsely accused, and um, actually, what it did, long, longer story shorter, I'll, I'll convince it. I ended up um, getting a ten thousand dollar raise because they they knew that I had been falsely accused, and they were concerned that I was going to be leaving the company. Uh, that's kind of the gist of it, and this is in a place that never, ever, uh, they actually would cut people's commissions if if somebody went and asked for a pay increase. So I was blessed to receive that increase, um, and I went for it, and that was my negotiating pivot. Uh, the other thing about the holidays, um, when I stopped uh, dealing with the, the uh, holidays of the nations, um, I, w I admit that I was, not because I was attempting to be self-righteous, but I was condemning the actions, not the people in certain ways, but now I'm at the point where I stop condemning. Uh, I'm now, I just let things slide. I do my own thing. I don't worry about what everybody else is doing. This, is the, I've been, this has been the case for many years now. But I would actually take even a situation where, okay, great. Well, you guys have a holiday. I'll go into work. And when I was in a job that would give me extra bonuses for going in on the holiday. And because uh, one role was a 24-7 type of industry. And so I turned it into a, a financial gain for myself, so so to speak, and time gain. So there's a lot of great points. And it is, uh, and I appreciate the positive uh, the, um, uh, mentality uh, of the room. I really appreciate that. And because uh, it, it's helped me have a different spin on things um, in, in life. So I appreciate that. Thank you for the time to interact. Uh, yeah, to Dara Baffa, that uh, luxury class. And uh, yeah, you, you've you been here a few years, haven't you? Uh, you've been here for a while. On and off, huh? I know you have. I, I, I remember that name. I remember the name. But back to luxury classes, uh, testimony about the, 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 the 10K situation. Uh, you, you know, luxury class didn't have to do anything on his own. He didn't have to go make petitions. He didn't protest. And again, big brother handled the situation for him. Well, big father, the big Abba handled the situation for him. And that's the way you need to see it going forward. As people may put you down, they may want to shame you, and they may want to do all these things, all these manner of evil against you. You don't have to retaliate. You don't have to try to get back at them. You let you let the big Abba, you let the master handle all of your, all of your, you know, all of the, let's just say the unnecessaries. You see. So I think it's very very important. Uh, that uh, you all understand that going forward is you don't have to retaliate. You don't have to try to one up or get back at it. You know, uh, really quickly, how come you sent me this video over the past six days of labor of this guy? You know, short guy. Look, he looks like he's a you know Indian guy or he may be from Pakistan or somewhere in India, but uh, short guy, short short stature guy. But he's really good at basketball. But uh, he would go to different basketball courts, but nobody would let him play. 
nobody would let him play. And so he got to the point where he got so aggravated that he wasn't getting put in the game. He went to Venice Beach. He went all over, all over the place. He went to a couple of gymnasiums like YMCA. And nobody would let, never let him get into the pickup games, you see. And uh, I guess because they saw him at short stature, they thought he couldn't play. So he got so frustrated. So what he'd do is he'd go to these courts. He'd go to these basketball courts, and he'd actually go and take their ball. He'd take the ball from them, and then, you know, the guys would start getting mad. And then he'd say, okay, guard me, guard me. And so this guy, he'd remind me of like an Allen Iverson. And he, he'd school them. He'd go in and, and he'd, he'd dribble past them and, and make them come out of their, their, their tennis shoes. And then he'd go right to the hoop and do a layup and score. And everybody, 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 that he, everybody around would, you know, start cheering him and everything like this. Yeah, you saw it, huh? <laughs> he reminded me. And so, so what happened was every time this guy would do this, uh, the guy that would, the guy that was guarding this nice little basketball player would get so upset to where he would want to go and try to start fighting the little guy. So the guy's running for his life. He's ducking and dodging these big old, because some of these guys, these basketball players, are a lot taller than he is. So he's ducking and dodging them. And, and, uh, and, uh, and so I found it very instructional on many different points. This being this is that when, when people, you know, you perceive people as not being, you know, because, because you already, like, profile them or even judge them in a way to where the, you, you think they're, they're not successful, they can't be successful, or they're not good in this particular field because of just how you perceive them to look just based on stature, you see. And then you get angry when they do succeed. You see, this is, and I said, wow, this is like, this is like the, that hater mentality of people that, and then when they show you up, man, matter of fact, they outperform you. You may have seen this in the business world. In whatever kind of field that you're in, and you outperform, you outshine your coworker or somebody else that they thought that you were less than them, and you actually surpassed them, and you you actually are superior to them by your skill ability. Then they become haters, and they become so angry, just like these guys. I was watching because this guy he went to like I want to say four different places, four different places to go play basketball, and every time, every one of the guys that he schooled, that he got, tried to guard him and couldn't. They tried to guard him, and they could not guard him. And he would go in and he would score points on these guys. And they would get so angry to where they wanted to fight this guy. They literally want to go up and fight. I'm like, wow. Wow. That's the mentality that we don't need to have. We should celebrate this little guy can play basketball very well. Matter of fact, I'd have tried to put him in on a team. But everybody got angry with him. They were kicking him off the court. You see, after he showed that he had the skills to pay the bills on the basketball court. I'm like, wow. So you don't need to retaliate. There's no need for retaliation. No need to get angry because somebody does something better than you do. Or somebody outshines you. That just, that just means you, you need to, that, that, that would be fuel for me to want to get better. To do better. Oh, I'm weak in this area. This guy is strong. That's great. I'm super happy for him. But now I, I, want, to, I want to better myself so I can do better. You see? So I, I just found that quite interesting and very instructional. Very instructional video. Boy, that guy was a good basketball player. He could dribble that ball. I tell you, he was just like, I, he was schooling all these big old tall basketball players like they were nothing. He'd just go right by them, and then he'd go right to the hoop, do a layup. And everybody's like, oh, wow, this guy, you got schooled by the little guy. Oh, and the, the big players didn't like that at all. They became very aggressive to the point of wanting to throw fisticuffs. What for? Over a basketball game? Are you kidding me? Just because this little man scored points on you? Come on, man. But that's where some people's mentality is. Don't let that be your mentality where you have to get back or you have to one-up. Because you were you were shamed. You were put down. No, 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 no. Let the big oppa handle the situation. You have more behind you than you have in front of you. Believe you me. You have the backing of Abrahu. You have the backing of Moses. You have the backing of Jacob and his family, his sons. Yeah, you have the backing of, you know, the master, Yahweh himself. Why do you need to worry? You have the backing of a covenant that's eternal. Why do you need to worry about getting one one off somebody else? No, no need for it. No need for it. And you can take this basketball analogy and apply it to every area of your lives. You professionals. Those of you who work in any kind of job. Always look to better yourself. Keep yourself humble and meek and better yourself. The little man was just trying to get into the game. Nobody would allow him in the game. So what did he have to do? He had to force himself into the game. Think about that for a minute. 
He had to force himself into the game. He had to force himself to be able to show himself that he he has the he had the approval, and he did. Think about that analogy. I'll tell you, it's cool. very instructional. Very instructional. So on that note, we're going to wrap it up. If there's anybody else want to give testimony, please do so. Raise your hand. Acknowledge yourself. Text in. If not, we're going to wrap it up for this Shabbat. I want you all to have a wonderful Shabbat. Great six days of labor ahead. Enjoy your family members, friends, and loved ones as we continue on this way and continue on to be pleasing in the sight of the Most Highest. You'll be able to tell us one day, job well done on this earth that you did. To Dabrabah for all of you, Mishpaha. I want you all to have a wonderful Shabbat. Great six days of labor ahead. And uh, enjoy your Shabbat. All right. We'll see you. If the Master so desires to linger, we'll see you next Shabbat. If not, I'll see you in Israel. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> all right. Have a great one. And make it great.